uh, can you guys see the screen? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah, we can also hear your dog. Sorry, that's mine. Apologize <laughs> in advance. Oh, okay, the dog went inside. Okay. Um, so for today, we're actually gonna be talking about what we did last week and this week, where we did a site analysis as well as kind of researched more on the different parties that we would want to include in our um, structure for the fabric building. So yeah, this slide actually shows the lot that we chose, which we showed before, but we wanted to show yeah the study where we had the square footage kind of taken into account. And next slide. And then kind of um, analyzing and remembering all the different areas around it because we felt like that would be a very yeah. important Sorry. factor to include since Sorry to yes. interrupt you. Uh, are you able to make this full screen so that the drawing is bigger? Oh no, mm -hmm. I just zoom yeah. in. Yeah, it's zoom, like zoom in a little bit. But we can better appreciate <laughs> it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, it kind of yeah, allowed us nice. to really understand the stakeholders that would be um, using the facilities. So then right there's the university, the residential, the office, and also the LRT. So that's the main stakeholders that we would be catering to, as well as the skaters for the skate park as well. And also we took into account the making of vehicular roads and pedestrian roads. So it kind of allows us to understand placement of the different programs that we would want to include. And also understanding, oh, sorry, like next slide. And then after that, we were trying to figure out also the sun path so that with the different programs, since we are doing a skate park, it was really important to kind of have this already since with skate parks, it does need natural lighting as compared to like um, artificial lighting. Well, also for the rest of the structure, but then mainly the pockets of light that allow for the skaters to actually be able to somewhat skate outdoors, even though that it's enclosed in a uh, multiple structures around the skate park and also with the heat as well because one of the major factors that kind of disrupt the skate park is the heat and the lack of shading which we did do a study on based off of our research and yeah so this was like important for that and next yeah oh wait sorry for the sun also because we also do want to incorporate plants so that was like important for that too and for the wind path, Naman, yeah, it's for proper ventilation and everything. So yeah, we can actually just skip that part. Next. And then for the noise and activity, this is actually also important because of their different programs. Um, since the different stakeholders come from the university, residential and office and such, um, the noise around the place allow for us to kind of understand how to properly place the entrances and such, and also like probably um, incorporate like noise cancellation or such, or like diffusing the noise in some areas. So then that was important for us to kind of analyze as well. No. Yeah. Um, so uh, our goal for, I guess this week, and I guess last week as well, was really to integrate the public space and the skate park. So uh, like, if you see this uh, picture over here, it's Shorty Skate Park in New Jersey. Um, it wouldn't seem very uh, uh, commuter friendly. Um, it's been filled with all the, I guess the graffiti and all, and it's not well maintained. <laughs> the shoes up here and stuff. And uh, the thing was, if we go back to the history of skating, which was, um, I guess found in the 50s um, and we uh, people used to like uh, build all kinds of skate parks for uh, with all the bowls the ramps and everything um, but um, throughout the 60s and 70s um, these uh, skateboarding parks were kind of demolished because um, when people get uh, into an accident um, these private uh, investors get sued for these accidents so it wasn't really uh, 
a good uh, play with the uh, the private and the the public. So uh, the now our goal was to find ways to um, ensure the safety of like the public space. Uh, I mean the commuters, uh, people just uh, chilling, walking and stuff, and the skaters. And we have to find the morphology of uh, the two uh, uh, programs. So uh, uh, what we did was like a sort of like looking at different uh, park skate spots and skate parks. Skate spots aren't meant to be skate parks, but these are just parks that were uh, found to be good uh, places to skate. So for example, uh, Love Park in, Phil in Philadelphia, New York, was one of the most iconic uh, skate spots in uh, the world, actually. And lots of videos were made here. But the thing was, uh, people, skaters would usually like um, bumped into people and uh, these people don't really like uh, the environment they're in. And uh, basically this wasn't really an, this wasn't an actually a good park for like people walking. But it was a good park for skaters. Uh, but um, and throughout the years, they kind of just um, changed the program of this park, and now people can't really skate in it, which is the sad thing. But if you um, look around the, the map of a love park, it actually makes sense. That's why it's not a good park for a public space because. Um, uh, in its vicinity, you'd find city halls, government offices, family courts, you know, a garage, banks, and all. So it's not really a place for public use. And uh, for people like skaters being in here, um, it kind of disrupts that um, that feeling of a government uh, area. So, yeah. And so in contrast to that, um, one of the most successful ones was the Mac, uh, yeah, was Macba in Barcelona, uh, which, uh, which they intentionally invited the skaters to skate in front of the, uh, the art gallery, I mean the museum, and uh, to compare the vicinity of uh, like Love Park, uh, was this it, this was filled with restos, restaurants, uh, bars educational school shops, uh, museums, and cultural centers. So it kind of makes sense why um, this uh, space here was a much more uh, ideal place of integrating the public and the skate park, where, for example, these ledges could be used for sitting, like this, these people, and for tricks as well. So um, from this study, we find ourselves finding like these uh, morphology of different kinds of uh, uses of like uh, a simple ledge or a ramp and all so we're gonna talk about that in a bit and like one of the features of uh, this uh, space uh, in Macba was that it was uh, intentionally like a plaza uh, and uh, as a plaza it's an urban living room uh, for everybody and uh, it was for socializing, it was for um, interacting with different kinds of people. So that's what we want to try to implement in our uh, skate park, I guess, um, and uh, to transform the skate park not not as a park but uh, a public space with a uh, with the fundamentals of uh, a skate park. So yeah. Then we have like a very simple like introduction uh, drawings here. Like we could uh, find like we could identify the linearity of a trick. For example, uh, a person grinding in a rail and how it could affect like a person here uh, and maybe multi-purpose amenities like uh, as a ramp, it could be probably a, a slide as well. Uh, and then in here where we could probably um, find ways to interconnect people, uh, people's movement 
while uh, and let them interact or um, let them be close to like people skating in a safe way and maybe lastly like others where we could create invisible barriers from uh, from like these from walkways so yeah so the first part of our research in how pe- uh, how skaters uh react or like how they move was uh the idea of when they um land a trick uh how would their uh time of recovery uh, affect like the their vulnerability so uh, from landing a trick they look down so uh, their peripherals are down below looking at the skateboard and at the ground and uh from like uh from research that i have did with like lots of uh, clips and I have timed them to find like an average and the maximum minimum I got like one to two seconds of them looking at uh, uh, looking forward to navigate their way to where they uh, to you know to see um, the people around them or like uh, if there are uh, things that that may uh, hinder them from you know skating uh linear so for that one to two second span it takes it will take six meters uh till they um navigate their way back to uh um the space so yeah so this studies of natural movement will be relevant when uh we consider the transition areas where pedestrian and skaters meet so yeah um because in ways we want spaces uh specifically for skaters like those bowls that you can't replace those ramps you can't replace and uh for people for the public use like you know benches and uh just wide spaces for them to relax and all so those transition areas of like uh, uh stairs going up or like uh those tight spaces of transition would be important to apply this study then supporting this study would be the uh, field of view so uh, um, a field of view of a person uh, in a skateboard would be different from a person walking uh, in front because of how uh, the head maxes out to 70 degrees so uh, you get a huge blind spot over here um, which could compromise uh, if people uh, if there are activity going uh, in this part where people could just walk and they don't know what they're doing looking at their phone and something would happen an incident could happen if there's if the blind spot is uh, compromised so uh, yeah So this one would be one of the first parties that we kind of made and uh, this would be like a synthesis of like the research that we did from that uh, showing A over here with linear transitions like for example this bowl kind of like tells you where to go it kind of directs you uh, from this transition over here and then we also have like the vegetation buffers that we uh, want to apply uh, of like fauna and floras. Then we have like the sea over here, which is a really important part because uh, it is a wall for the blind spot so that it's practically safe to keep your blind spot compromised so you could um, land in, uh, in here D which is the six meter plus landing, which is relevant in here in both sides. And then, yeah. So that would be a synthesis for that research. And then we also made like different, uh, we also wanted to apply different programs. Um, for this one, it's kind of like how we could integrate um, the public space and the uh, people skating but in this regard, it's more of like this more intimate spaces for pedestrians where they could um, 
have a sense of those trees, those plants and all. And uh, in here, see, it doesn't kind of show, but it's kind of like an aquaponic system that we uh, want to apply. Uh, and it's more of having this environment uh, that is kind of disconnected to the place, but still connects to um, to the skate park itself. So uh, having and like showing these, uh, these could be ramps, ledges, and uh, it kind of unlocks this curiosity of them, like uh, hearing the sounds of uh, people skating and looking at these uh, almost impossible uh, tricks. So uh, we kind of want visual interaction that kind of, and uh, like how the vegetation disrupts like a view, uh, a clear view of uh, this space which kind of if they would want to watch them clear they would like to interact with them closer they would go out from this place but this one this space over here is more of this intimate space that where you could uh, be closer to nature you could hear the sounds of the water and everything else then yeah then lastly it's like uh this part would be kind of a way to involve people, the spectators, to the the architecture of a bowl. And uh, these bowls came from uh, the kidney bowl made by Alvar Alto. And uh, some, uh, some iterations in uh, California kind of uh, normalized this bowl to be a skating uh, place to practice uh you know their vert uh, and bowl uh, tricks and all that kind of mimics the waves of uh california and uh to show here like how we could apply landscape an undulating landscape that kind of creates this uh almost stadium like uh environment plus having uh, uh these landings that uh, I mean, no landings that are kind of sloped so that it ensures that these people over here are safe. Um, kind of creates this uh, this safety net that lets them go closer to the to the action, I guess. And uh, and it's a lot safer. And um, what's the other one? Uh, and it's more involved. Uh, so that it kind of gives them an idea of like inspiration where they could actually like find a clear vision of what they're doing in the bowl because it's uh, lifted up like that. So yeah. Next one. Okay, so for this one, actually it's not so clear unless you zoom in. Can you zoom in? Sorry. Um, with the skate park, we did want to incorporate the different activities and programs that we wanted to put in our fabric building. So then since um, the skate park, we wanted to incorporate it into play and other activities like probably movie watching and such. This one is actually the half pipe and the full pipe or something, a quarter pipe and full pipe that would incorporate um, the rock climbing activity that we felt like would be an interesting thing to include. So then actually for the full pipe, that's about uh, five meters high. So that's the minimum as it's reflected on the um, the quarter pipe that I put, which is the maximum. Well, it's kind of uh, five meters because usually with full pipe, skaters would usually use a really big pipe for sewage or something and kind of just skate there. But then this is the minimum where we could possibly include into the structure itself. And on the side, that is where rock climbing could be introduced. So then even though people are skating inside, people who don't usually skate could interact with the structure, like from the outside and yeah, play around there. And then for the quarter pipe, since Jao already introduced how we would want to include like maybe a slide or something like that, we felt like adding also the rock climbing activity here as well 
So then it kind of promotes a variety of activities for a single um, form that we want to introduce throughout the structure. So yeah, next. So for this one, I mentioned movie, um, like an outdoor movie theater. So nowadays with COVID and everything, we did realize how uh, movie theaters have been shut down in the Philippines and some outdoor um, movie watching activities happen. Like I think I heard about one happening in New Valley or something and people would stay in the garden or in a field or even like in a car park where they're all inside a car individually and kind of watching a big screen. So then with the quarter pipe, this could be incorporated by having like a higher wall into it. And I remember from uh, two meetings ago, Jad did mention about how there needs to be a landing uh, from a maximum of maybe two to three meters high or something. But then with this, uh, it does allow for people to probably interact with the curve through skating, but then doesn't encourage people to usually stay there and block the view where uh, movies would be um, displayed and such. And then for the, if you move to the left, sorry. Oh, okay. For Sorry, for the movie watching also, that big ball could have openings probably. So then people within a structure or something could have uh, a view of what's going on from below. So then there's still an interaction from inside and outside the structure. So that's what we felt was very important. And also, um, that is the height where people could probably land like after skating and such so then people could still hang out there in that um, open space and still like ha it's kind of um, directed to that area only so that people don't yeah, really block the view where um, probably like a projector would yeah, flash a screen. And then on the left side, this one shows, well, the top most on the back, yeah, I wrote that one. That one shows like the different levels that could be incorporated. So then, well, from our research, there was like a minimum, I mean, a maximum height of two to three meters, right, for a uh, half pipe and a quarter pipe and everything. But then it could go as low as probably one meter or 1.5 for like beginners. So then have like incorporating like the change of the curves would be an interesting aspect to include as well. And also with a lower uh, ramp, it could also be used as a slide possibly. And in the middle one, this one actually shows how there's an interaction of two quarter pipes or probably two half pipes or something. And then in the middle of it is probably like an entryway where kids could probably um, go inside and kind of play through the structures, but then we kind of have to study still when incorporating into in our structure the movement of the people because we kind of have to create some kind of human choreography in some sense. So so yeah, and then for the front row, Naman, that one actually just shows like the different kinds of uh, cruising trail, like wave type of ramps. So then. This one kind of shows how it could be incorporated into probably like a bench or a place to sit. Yeah, like some random place to sit, but then still like kind of allow skaters to use it for doing tricks and such. So yeah, but then for doing tricks, Naman, it's usually for the more, the non-hollow ones. So then it kind of gives like a signal that, uh, that's probably like a safer place to do their tricks rather than the more hollow ones that are on the right side. So yeah. Um, and then from the wave ramps, you can kind of just play with the shapes and the um, the different varieties of, yeah, waves and such. Okay, next. And for this one, um, what do you call it again? The fun box and the... Um, so manual pad. Yeah, the pad. Sorry, yeah, the manual pad. So then we wanted to kind of incorporate this into some sort of play activity or like a lounging activity that could happen in the skate park and the rest of the 
area. So then with the manual pad, actually, people kind of use that to do tricks and kind of learn how to yeah do some other stuff. And it could be incorporated into like a fun box where there's different um, heights for this, where people would probably try to escape from the top and going down or even try to jump to the higher box or whatever. And in the third one, like on the right one where Jao is pointing to, that's we felt like it could be an interesting way to kind of place like the barrier where there's inside this fun box or something. It could be a lounge area where people don't usually escape but can just hang out in the middle of all this activity going around. So yeah, thanks. And for this one, I think Jao already kind of showed how we would introduce it as a party, but then this is the types of stairs that we could possibly use. So then the first one, which is the top left, um, yeah, this one's just a regular staircase where, um, yeah, there's no not much railings or anything, but then on next to it, there's actually like a ledge where the skaters could use so that they're kind of gliding on it and then landing to the bottom. And then the third one, next to that one, um, Jao introduced it as an opportunity to kind of skate on both ends and also introduce like a uh, possibly vegetation in the middle of those activities. So then I'll kind of explain later of how um, the vegetation would be incorporated. Um, so yeah. And then, so yeah, there's also the railings and possibly on the front left one, that one's the one where there's like a different uh, depth in the stairs. Like um, there would, it would be more for possibly like people sitting down on like some sort of bleacher or people are allowed to like do tricks or everything. And then next to that one, there's more of like a ramp incorporated into the stair where it's not a ramp necessarily for people because it actually doesn't follow uh i mean people walking or using like a, a wheelchair or something because it doesn't really follow the proper ratio for code and stuff so then this one yeah is specifically for skaters to possibly do their tricks and then i was kind of playing around with what a staircase is because right there's landings and everything but possibly with the a movement going down it could possibly also become like a wave or something and then it would be an interesting terrain for skaters to be introduced to and practice a different kind of move movement so it adds a variety to that so yeah um next slide so for this one this one introduces volcanoes and uh, yeah the hills and everything so in the middle it actually shows the recommended height. So then it, that, I think that's about 600 millimeters, yeah, high and everything. So then it would allow for people to possibly do tricks and kind of try to jump over them or do their turns and everything. And then there's also the ramp where possibly a ramp could be a place where they, yeah, practice their ollies, right? And then kind of jump over something. So then it's, a lot more like some sort of like danger comes into it, but then it's very exciting and pretty safe based off of like, if we follow the recommended standards that we were able to research on. And then in the back area, actually with ramps and ledges and everything, we wanted to play with the form because usually there's like a standard form that's um, placed in skate parks, but then with how we wanted to kind of create some things more interesting and different and introduce like a different type of movement and such. So something not so boring and where people can, who don't skate can interact with. So we played with a ramp that people could possibly like sit on the other side because of the movement of like a skateboard it would probably would be like limited to a certain height there. Or like, for example, in the, um, the ledges on the, back right side both of them they're actually like curved and everything so then i kind of was able to research on how these shapes kind of influence the skaters to be um more interested in kind of 
um, experimenting in these types of things and as well as it being a place for people to possibly sit and create some sort of barrier. So next. Okay, sorry, I don't know if I lagged. Um, so for this one, the mine, it's for the bowls because there are more flat and um, sharper terrain for skate parks, but then with bowls, it's kind of different because in bowls, it's kind of influenced by the empty pool areas that were transformed into some sort of skate park and kind of allows like a very flowy movement for skaters to kind of do some sort of turns and kind of interact with different skaters as well in that area. So then with that, I kind of just got like the recommended like depth and as well as the size for probably a beginner and more advanced skater. So then as you can see, the smaller ones are for yeah beginners. And um with the black area, actually, the bowl with a, like a black top, like a black surface, yeah. Um, we kind of saw how trampolines could also be incorporated in the skate park because uh, skaters do use that to practice their tricks as well. And at the front, with my lack of current lack of sketch up skills for now, um, and not really incorporating the um, the different bowls into one area, but then we did want to have like a variety of different bowls next to each other and not have like a giant bowl at the center or something, as we wanted to create an interesting movement for the people to kind of skate around. And in the front, it shows that possibly the different connections between the bowls. So then it does allow for like a variety of um, landings or allow for people to experience that. In the third one, it's kind of like a wave ramp. So then instead of jumping, it could just be like passing through to another bowl or something. So then with these, we kind of want to be able to incorporate that in, yeah, in the future plan. So yeah, next. So, okay. So now we kind of want to talk about like a different party that we wanted to include. So that's water. So the main reason that we kind of thought of including water that sparked our interest to it actually was how the origin of skate and how people do want to skate because, well, okay, for like the origin, like it originated from a place where people would usually surf. And when there's no waves, people would kind of look to the streets to be able to have that sort of similar movement and freedom that uh, surfing does provide. So then we were kind of interested in um, bringing that feeling and ambiance to the skate park that we're doing. But then we felt like that reason wasn't enough. So then we were looking into how we like how we could incorporate it and how important it could be to the structure itself. So next. So yeah, for this one, we wanted to incorporate um, the sound and the opportunity to provide um, a very um, efficient way to possibly like give water to the vegetation around the place. So for this one, uh, we wanted to incorporate aquaponics in a sense to the skate park and the structure that would be surrounding it. Um, and with this one, we wanted to make like, for example, like a collection from possibly the bowls as like a bowl was inspired by like a pool. So then we would want to like have that area be able to collect water as well as possible other places that we would kind of think of. And then there's yeah, a filter unit and then a storage that could be used for both the aquaponics utility for the building and for possibly um yeah the cleaning and everything maintenance for the rest of the place so then first for aquaponics the water collection was very important actually for uh the climate because being in a tropical climate 
in an aquaponic system, when the water is exposed, water does evaporate, so it needs to be filled or else like the filter would be destroyed or something. So then that was a very important thing to include. And also with water fountains, there's a natural aeration for the water because with fish, fish do need oxygen still, even though they're in water. So then that aeration allows for the oxygenation of the water if there's like the breaking of water tension with um, the air bubbles and everything. And so also with the the collected water to be used for the building, like for toilets and everything, like flushing and even like the cleaning of the facilities, the water could be used for that as well. And yeah, and then moving to the aquaponics specifically, it could be used for being able to water the plants and provide for the like the for the fertil fertilizer, sorry for the plants and everything because it could have just been like a hydroponic system where it's just like a water system going around but we felt like we felt that the fish and having like an aerator would allow for the noise of um the possible fountains to be incorporated to provide a very nice ambience to the rest of the skate park and also the fish, yeah, does provide fertilizer and everything. And yeah, mm, I'm missing something. No, okay, I think that's it for this slide. And then, so yeah, for this one, I kind of just wanted to place like a Venn diagram of the relationship of the different elements and how we could really incorporate it into the structure itself. So then it shows the relationship of the different elements um, like for the fish to the water where it does need to provide um, proper like maintenance for the water because we don't want it to be something that's too hassle or too um, like that needs a lot of tools to like make sure it's like, still clean. So then we wanted all the systems to be very natural in a sense. And also like with the people, plants and fish, there's some sort of harmony with connecting all three of them into like a single fabric building and then also yeah it's mostly just about being able to understand the connection amongst like all four of these so that we won't forget about the different aspects needed for each um element yeah so then in the middle actually it just shows like how filtration water collection oxygen are very important and how we really want to be able to think about these things and incorporate it into possibly an interesting party into the building. So yeah, next slide. And then lastly, this is the program that we fixed because I know that um, a couple, like two meetings, like, yeah, last meeting two weeks ago, we did show a program, but then with this, we wanted to really focus on understanding the flow of a skate park. So then we do have like a kid skate park where it would connect to possibly skate pockets and everything and go through a, a more intermediate skate park and then in connection to the bowls and such. And then also it kind of shows its connection to the different, other, like the other programs that we want to include, which is the clinic, skate shop, and alfresco dining. So yeah, maybe Jayona also. Uh, not really <laughs> okay so that's basically it and also the arrows show like yeah the connections between all of them because with the aquaponics which is actually the blue with the water sign and everything um it's we have to be very careful in incorporating the aquaponics and the ponds to the rest of the site because water and skateboards don't mix very well so then we have to be very car careful with that as well and we do want to like provide connections of views for people, not necessarily connection to be able to walk to the certain area and the accessibility aspect to it. So then we wanted to really show this as well. So yeah, I think that's it. Okay, uh, thank you for that very hefty presentation and uh, I really appreciate uh, the drawings, it's very clear. And I have no comments on the presentation. Uh, basically, you are setting a very good standard and example for everyone. 
And um, but as for uh, the idea development for an innovation project is actually perfect. But let me clarify something about what a party is, uh, especially in an academic setting, and especially when we are looking for uh, something innovative. Uh, uh, although I could be wrong um, by the way I'm reading it, although I could be wrong by the way that I'm assuming that this is just probably just the first stage. But uh, just to you know, um, put things clearly, I would assume that this is just an enumeration of your knowledge about the skate park, uh, the skating culture, and the skating science. Uh, is this correct? Yeah, more or less. Oh yeah, that's very good. I'm very happy to to hear that because this is not the party yet. You know what I mean? So basically, you're just enumerating the elements of a skate park uh, it becomes a party the moment you synthesize it with a program with an architecture that it doesn't look like a skate park anymore and yet you can still do those things that you were talking about that it is part of the architecture that it's part of the overall experience and the program and how people live but it's derived from the skate park science a skate park a skating uh skating culture uh you, you get it guys yeah yeah sir. yeah because these are all perfect research materials like you have the numbers you have the perfect diagrams but these are just an enumeration of that data and uh because what's the, the beauty about the skate parks abroad um especially the one of macba i've seen it in person is that they came out naturally. It wasn't really designed as a skate park per se. So uh, and just, just the same analogy with the graffiti culture. How do you differentiate graffiti from mural? But I don't think that should be the debate or the argument when it comes to this building typology that you're developing. So uh, because, uh, but as a case study, I guess it's okay, but how, how what kind of ideas are you trying to get from the Makba situation uh, because it's an accidental or consequential or circumstantial uh, circumstantial uh, type of uh, development that it just turned into a skate park in your case you are intentionally uh, doing it for a building so just create a happy medium that actually you don't have to you don't have to actually elaborate on it. I mean, you are already developing a typology, so it is intentional. But I'm just clarifying what the, be the, the beauty of, of the circumstantial skate parks abroad. So, uh, yeah. So, th do you have any thoughts regarding it? So, uh, before I continue? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Because um, I compared Mac but to Love Park. And like I even like um, said like what's around them like this one is more of government in Love Park that's why it's not really great, and uh, this one is more on you know restos like museums and everything else, so like the thing that I got from it was the plaza idea where um, the amenities that support um, the skate park the plaza and everything else like what we tried to do with the skate shop and we have even clinics and our fresco dining um th that's kind of like the synthesis we kind of wanted to apply mm -hmm. yeah, with yeah. Uh, yeah that thing with the plaza okay that's very good but i have yet to see the translation but i think uh what's really nice about the skate park culture like you said it evolved from the surfing culture for the lack of uh, the waves um, they sort of resorted to the concrete to concrete and and with the same event um, the unexpected uh, environment that the public space provide um, maybe I don't know I'm just curious if it's really something a skate park is skate park, especially if it's in, it, intended for it. But I wonder, just like parkour, 
wherein the city is like their playground. Um, I don't know if it holds true with the skate culture. So, uh, and that's what I'm seeing with the map. Uh, like the, the city became like part of it. And then you see the same situations in BGC. Despite the, the morphologies appropriate for, for districts. So, uh, but I don't think it's that relevant, but I am, I really like that you pointed out um, the programs that uh, actually are surrounding it. Uh, but you also need to keep in mind that probably just like what I said about the city as their playground, just like parkour. Uh, I don't know if it's relevant or maybe just, um, or it's something that you can discuss or it's something that is useful. Or I mean, um, maybe even if it's just, uh, let's say it's not a, an alfresco dining, it's just a the one in Makba. I'm talking about Makba. It's just a market, or probably just a school, etc. Uh, I don't, and I'm not sure if it will really matter if they are allowed. I think the 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 big issue with skate borders is that they are prohibited from you know from doing their thing in the city because the security guards would stop them. So, uh, but again, in terms of your project, I don't think it's that relevant, but it's something that you need to weigh in um, because uh, it's good that you pointed that out, but you also need to criticize if that actually matters. Um, but it, and I'm not negating it, don't, don't get me wrong. It's just something that I wanted to exercise your critical thinking. Um, but, uh, but it's something that is very intriguing and something that you can actually still put in your study. Any, any yeah. feedback? Yeah. Um, we actually thought of that circumstance. Mm -hmm. Like, um, that's why like most of the, even the pictures that we showed was more of skate spots in parks rather than uh, skate parks because from like the papers that I've read um, skate parks are more treated as uh, training grounds yeah everything yeah. is there and it's like um, designed to be skated on and usually people uh, in skate spots would translate uh, things that aren't meant to be uh, things for skating as uh, you know uh, places to skate and most of the time like nine times out of ten these are the places where they take videos on uh, because it's the i guess cooler one and the most unique one to show so mm -hmm. what we're trying to do in our um uh project was kind of everything is meant to be skated on but um i think we could use time i guess of how people uh populate the space and maybe we could um, sort of uh, reduce a uh, reduction. Um, the term is reduction in cooking, I forgot. But then okay. how they kind of congregate to a, diff a certain area eventually, yeah. but then still um, give them opportunity, uh, depending on the time, maybe uh, to um, skate wherever they want. That's the uh, point there. And we also wanted to uh, you know um apply that kids thing um like showing uh, like connecting these uh alfresco dining for example to the kids skate park because we're trying to change the mindset of like or normalize the the skating part mm -hmm. uh and like one of the uh case studies that we found like in crystal palace uh uh skate park um they had like uh, different depths of the bowls that's why lots of uh, lots of kids uh, would con would prefer that place compared to like a regular skate park that's kind of dangerous so yeah. yeah i guess those points of like changing the mindset of people that's make them co more comfortable to skating and everything should be skated on so yeah Actually, that's how I imagine it. That's why I'm actually very excited to see the development of the actual party. And when we see, like I said, uh, just to be clear, the actual party is not this yet. No, it's really about the integration of it to the architecture. It doesn't look like an actual skate park. The way I imagine it is like 
in a layman's term, if you've seen the building of Gaudi, uh, try to try to look at the forms of Gaudi. They are uh, they're very ornate, complicated, complex, etc. But in your case, and I'm talking about the quality of the the forms and the complexity of the forms. But try to imagine if those forms are actually quote unquote skatable. You know what I mean? So it's like uh, like a skate bar, skate park city, but it's not it's not really uh, the typical skateboard uh, training facility that you would see. And I, I'm happy that you mentioned uh, the different depths of bowls for the so that it encourages the kids to to use it. So that's what I'm saying. Uh, like how uh, do you make it look normal? Not no 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 sorry. How do you make it uh, look ambiguous? Uh, that it doesn't look like a skateboard, but it is meant for skateboarding. You know what I mean? So, uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, the development. Uh, anything else, guys? Yeah. So far, it's it's a very excellent uh, presentation. Um, none so far. Okay. Yeah, see none so far. Thank you. Okay. See you. Thank you. So, who wants to go next, guys? So yeah, uh, so after I know, after Pabico, who wants to go next? Buen Camino, okay, na ba kayo? TJ, yes, sir, sige. All right, sige. okay, go ahead. Uh, wait, sir, uh, lens, Hello, hello. Yeah, G. <laughs> so, so I guess I'll uh, start. Uh, yung dinevelop namin sir for the the past two weeks is uh, medyo nag mas nag focus kami more on the uh, yung res uh, recycling facility namin of textiles or clothes in general. So uh, here's kind of a basically the same process, pero medyo in organize lang namin into different sections. So, uh, next thing to last week is, uh, starts with the preparation, which is the uh, collection of uh, clothes. Then uh, uh, it's cleaned. Then then it's uh, it goes to through a drying process. Bago to start the actual recycling part, which is uh, where it's turned into new fabric. Then the new fabric. Uh, is tailored into new clothes. So uh, here's a detail of the basically the weaving process. Uh, since we're uh, we're not planning to, on using uh, manual looms, uh, sinubukan namin i dissect the process of a mechanical loom. Uh, so basically, uh, the spools of thread. Uh, it starts with it starts with the spools of thread. Na they are kind of pulled into a uh, it's called a dropper. So parang naka so this part or basically just organizes the threads into uh, into a like into a into a organized line. Para yun yung when you weave into the actual uh, fabric. Then basically, so the last part is just the kind of rolling and the packaging of the fabric into a uh, yeah, into a roll for future use. So uh, yung idea namin at first was since major reliant nga sa machine yung process was we, we were trying to think of ways na maging Part of architecture, or it would affect the architecture. Pero uh, this was kind of an uh, early idea na medyo hindi namin na develop. But the the part afterwards, which is yung after yung may roll into a fabric, uh, yung part na gagawin na siyang clothes is meron kaming idea of parang ita transport yung fabric into the into a separate place in the building. So, itong formula to is naisip namin para 
hindi lang siya maging like a separate place in the building but it's also it also becomes like an uh, part of the architecture itself where the fabric is transported into the next phase of the production line in a nutshell it's being celebrated the product of the facility And then this one is the more focused side, which can be suggestive of the architectural solution. So first is we collect the clothes. And then uh, before washing it, para mas madali siya i-wash, uh, we shred it first into strips, large strips. And then after washing, it's uh, dried outside in a way na it's put on a, uh, uh, a belt. Next slide. So that belt is going to be the facade or the main feature of the building. And you can notice under those is my circles. Those are the uh, tumbling machines for washing the clothes by batch, by large batches. Then next one is, this is the RT for the flexible belt that goes through the building. So how they do it is after washing it, they put it on uh, like a desk and then it gets clipped on to the belt using a magnet and then that belt is going to go through the building. Yung parang sa Monsters, Inc. Yung, yung mga doors sa Mon Monsters, Inc. <laughs> Tapos, ayun, basically, that's ano, so, the idea. Uh, yeah, we, we just tried to turn the drying process into like a, almost like an art exhibit. Yung mga, fab, mga clothes na nakahang. Uh, now, uh, another idea that we have was using a form of textile as a building material. Pero since clothes, like the cotton from clothes is too uh, light, uh, we tried to look into different textiles and we, we uh, discovered or we saw that uh, the textile used in tarpaulin, which is made of polyethylene, can actually be used as a more dense or a harder fabric which can be used as a building material so uh before in tarpaulin so uh we're thinking of using the textiles or tensile material as the building material so for example the facade can be used uh using the products of the facility the recycling facility so uh, to make it more durable, uh, we looked into tarpaulin. So that's the polyethylene tarpaulin. And then... So while we were thinking about uh, the material itself, we realized that since uh, the material was you know, uh, soft and light, uh, we realized that it, it's a good material to use for something that involves children because of how uh yeah it's soft and it could be a play it could turn into a playful material and because of that we uh try to incorporate an the idea of having a uh preschool in in the facility so it's gonna be a mix of a uh tailoring or a workshop and also like a preschool or a daycare center for children and major makes sense Rinsha. Because since the plan namin was to use the building as like a source of livelihood for the residents, so if they go work to your parents, maybe they can have their uh, children like stay with them in the building and then para magiging learning center din siya. So uh, coming from that, uh, we looked into different. Uh, uh, philosophies when it comes to teaching, especially in children. And uh, I'll discuss more about it later. But for uh, 
we classified it into two things, two groups for the children. So the zero to seven years, basically, they seek spaces with seek spaces that feels like home. So uh, basically, the comfort of being at home, while the seven to fourteen years old are in need of more expression of creativity, like arts. So yun yung naging goal namin for designing the learning center. So for the for this one, we found uh, a researcher, a uh, psychologist that looked into the aesthetics of joy. So uh, the main premise of it was uh, why do we feel joy with certain things like um, bubbles, swimming pools, uh, hot air balloons, ice cream cones, especially with uh, sprinkles, and then like rainbows and fireworks. So the thing about it is it's joyful for almost everyone. Uh, not just kids, but also uh, elderly. So it cuts across age and ethnicity. So we were told that these are just passing pleasures that we experience. But then this is actually something we share as humans. So uh, in a way, it's what makes us humans. So looking into it, she noticed that uh, those things are usually round things and uh, the random pops of bright colors and symmetry, sense of abundance and multiplicity, sense of lightness. So where can we see this? Uh, when we look at schools now, parang all the colors are so bland, like uh, puro white, gray, beige, it doesn't create a environment where people can uh, feel joy, but uh, SDA is a exception. So from that, we were exploring on how we can apply this on our architecture. So how? Um, next slide. So this dot doesn't look too joyful. But then if we, next slide, make it abundant, it suddenly becomes joyful. So how can we apply this? We thought of, since we're dealing with tensile materials and cloth, and we're also uh, dealing with kids, we were wondering if we can, we can uh, make the kids decorate the place. We can paint the place and the entire structure. Uh, next slide. This is the Shinjuan nursing home. This is a precedent. So instead of uh, making it plain, she she used these pop of color and apparently it helped a lot. Next slide. This is another in, uh, by Arakawa. So using that premise, the aesthetics of joy, she uh, he created an uh, entire uh, project, a loft project that's built on bright colors all throughout and round shapes. So according to the speaker, uh, she felt like uh, she's re re reversing her age in a way na parang bunga bata siya and there. So next slide. So uh, we looked into the uh, pedagogy. It's basically the science of learning and teaching. And Waldorf, Waldorf pedagogy is kind of a method of teaching. It's like, uh, it's... It, com it comes from uh, an edu educational philosopher, Rudolf Steiner. Basically, he has principles on how children should learn. And it focuses on cultivating the pupils' uh, imagination and creativity. So based on him, there's different uh, aspects of space where we're in. 
uh, child, uh, children needs in order to learn more effectively. So these are the principles. It's flexibility, uh, comfort, harmon harmony between the arts, rhythmic elements, colors, nature, geomet geometric perception, and natural lighting. So some of these are very uh, straight to the point, but some, some of it we try to incorporate with our space in a more unique or a more creative way, which we will discuss next. So flexibility, basically having spaces that are very dynamic uh, and creating active environments. So since we were exploring with the use of textile materials, we were thinking about uh, using the material as like temporary partitions so that the spaces can be uh, configured in different uh, different manners depending on the activity. Uh, this way, the, the, because the spaces are changing, uh, for the children, it's like being, it's like being in, being more explorative and more adventurous with the space. And yeah, so next is rhythmic elements, which is basically just uh, repetitive patterns or uh, repetitive elements such as frames which we uh, incorporated with our dry, drying belt idea earlier and harmony between har harmony between the arts so basically it, uh, we, we found out that space uh, with the Waldorf pedagogy uh, a lot of schools should have spaces that exceeded the arts of that were developed by the students so here, uh, Lance, can you explain this one? Yeah, for example, uh, the aesthetics of joy. So instead of us creating those random pops of bright colors, why not make the kids participate, but not limited to only the kids, maybe the other people or the elderly to create that environment. So they shape their own environment. And this is good so that, uh, for example, the, the flow of uh, canvases from the recycling facility, they can just cut these and take, take it home and then replace it with something new. So it's a blank canvas again. So it creates a cycle that uh, makes it continuous. So here we just attempted, but then uh, there are a lot of problems, for example, the structural and the utilities part of this. But then we were exploring in how we can use tensile material to shape or to create radical design in how people live. So we were exploring on trampolines. So what if we remove the springs and those floor can be where people live or people work. So here, the floors are all uh, canvases and trampolines. Uh, but yeah, we just attempted it today. That's all for us today. That's our last answer. Oh, Dana. OK. So good, you need to answer a lot of questions like uh, who will install the fabric because uh, I've seen a lot of propo proposals like this but it's always a question of how much of it is actually um, participative and how much of it is actually the architect's intervention so I think you need to define it clearly because otherwise the motivation and the philosophy of it will be a little coerce or contrived so uh, I think you need to step back and try to review it and if you are confident with that direction already then then uh, 
maybe one of the questions that you know really knowing your material uh like what kind of fabric that is washable that is reusable etc um also asking the right questions such as who would want to work on a flooring that is unstable so uh yeah so uh while the attempt is really interesting and spectacular but i don't think uh, you are asking the mature questions um don't just explore for the heck of exploring uh, explore with the right variables in mind uh, such as comfortability you already started it with the no eh? with with asking if sterile environments are actually inviting and then you want to make it look more vibrant etc and then all of a sudden we have this proposal which is a little um, contradicting to that philosophy um, so uh, it's a little confusing so you need to be very consistent in that spectrum so I yeah so uh, let, let's see how this goes Although the first slides is quite interesting, the one with the conveyor, with the, the fabric, it almost reminds me of Heatherwick's theater in, I don't know if it's in Shanghai, I forgot already. Uh, but yeah, but later on, the moment you are able to define the program, you need to orchestrate all of these elements as if it's not just a machine that you put on the side. If we see a lot of uh, hand clothes in a Hong Kong condominium, that it became an aesthetic of something that's very circumstantial already. Um, that's how it feels right now. Um, it's only circumstantial, it, it wasn't really intentional. So how do you put that to the next level? In some Payan idea, how do you put that to the intentional level? Um, because you're already designing from zero, tabula rasa, so why make it as if it's accidental? Do you get what I'm saying, uh, guys? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, so uh, the moment you have a program, you'll be able to orchestrate it, just like what Janelle did with her hip line arana everything is orchestrated uh whereas you know in in the real world uh we have situations where it, it's just all basically a matter of life situation that you know it, you need to put your clothes there you need to wash your clothes there etc so uh i've seen imageries although i know i don't know if i want to go there um of uh, I think Jackie Cruz went there with their family, like a place where they bathe, where they, it's a holy river in India. And uh, it's very colorful, very, I'm sure it's very experiential because that's where also they, they, they poop as well. Um, so uh, it's a good or bad thing, uh, but, uh, but these are all um, uh, circumstantial not really intentional. And in our case, you're designing already, uh, but you are leaving room for something circumstantial. I get it. But for the machine, like, I, it doesn't make sense that it has to be circumstantial. Do you, do you know what I mean? So it's, you need to balance it. Uh, although I understand that you're giving freedom to the users, to the stakeholders to interact with architecture. So uh, you just need to be confident and concrete there shouldn't be no gray area because we're trying to validate the ideas, whether it, it came from you or because it's too lazy to say that, you know, I'll just leave it to the users. So just, just uh, design a box. That's it. You're done. So that's why in this exercise, in an academic setting, you know, you, you, know, you need to define it. Uh, there should be no gray area. All right. 
Okay, sir. Let's... Okay, see ya. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. See, ya. um, Jericho, and then, and then just yes, to sir. add, um, like, uh, although I understand, man, we're uh, try to elevate this project more than a design for especially the old students because I. I ano na eh, uh, nasermonan ko na si La Kevin and Tracy because uh, sabi ko, you know, don't make this as if it's more sim simple than a design for a project. So, uh, you know, the two weeks, to be honest, Lance and Julian is not good enough, um, that progress. Uh, it's already week five and, you know, and I'm already seeing down the road what will happen. Uh, while your high building was very impressive because you really had very good rendering skills, presentation skills. Uh, you know, we, we all know that, you know, it needs room for processing. Um, it was rushed. So uh, not a lot of substantial development yet. So um, maybe slightly with the base group and Jaws, uh, but I find it a little slow. All right. That's my honest right, observation. Sorry. Okay, see, so go ahead, uh, Jericho, and uh, and who else? Uh, Jericho and Francis. Kita na po, sir. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, Francis, Francis will uh, start. Sir. Okay. So to start, sir. Um, binalikan namin yung feedback na nakuwa namin nung Art This Five yung ang sinabi ni Sir Jerry about um, making the Catholic and the Muslim community um, communicate. And so we wanted to tackle some issues that we had for both communities, which is um, yun na, basically yung interaction and lack of communication between the two religions. And so the solution that we came up with is to integrate the public spaces within the within the spaces that both uh, both communities use the most um, considering that um, public spaces are um, parang dito nangyayari yung pinakamaraming um, human interaction and um, we also relo relocated the most the riverside so um, in a way the Pasig River becomes a common thread um, that both communities can share, given that um, in each religion they both have um, um, parang a symbol of how they interpret um, bodies of water and water and smoke. And so, uh, next slide, please. Um, so, we um, in our Site analysis. Sir. We wanted to include the sun path after um, finding out that our Muslim brothers and sisters, um, on average, pray five times a day, and four out of five times um, they pray from um, in daylight. And so, given the opportunity that um, daytime is much longer than nighttime here in the Philippines, um, we wanted to make use of the sun to change or um, parang redefine the way that mosques create that um mosques create the experience um of uh, during the time of prayer and so um yun lang. um so if we uh, from um last week which we weren't able to complete present um we actually already had plans for the typologies that we want to include in the waterfront development so aside from relocating the mosque, we also thought of placing a seafood halal market, specifically seafood, because aside from the fact that you have the Pasig River as a resource, um, uh, seafood in um, Muslim culture is already considered halal, like compared to um, meats where you already where you have to go through like a prayer process in order for it to go halal. Um, if it's like for seafood or animals in the water, it's already considered halal once you take it out and you start um, parang butchering it and serving it. So it's more in a way simple, like the rules that you, the rules for making seafood into halal is more simpler compared to those of meat. So that's why you wanted to go with that type of um, 
uh, typology. And then we also wanted to integrate more of a, like, a religious learning center because like most mosques, um, they already have like, an inter- like they only use a space like for the mosque. So they use a space to actually teach the kids and children when they want to grow up and like become a religious official in the mosque. But we wanted to separate that typology in order to sanctify that a mosque is only for worship where we place like another typology for learning specifically. And uh, as I I also wanted like Muslim community residentials for like uh, the Muslim officials and other Muslim, the Muslim people. Although we haven't really decided on where the, this typology would be located since um, it's under, it's most likely under yung residential commercial and mixed use. So, um, we actually considered the program of each of the typologies that we had in plan. Although we haven't had a program for everything yet, we wanted to see what program would best fit based on their activities. So here is like a chart. So you say yellow is more on like the mosque. Well, we already actually had a program, an initial program for this. But for the seafood halal market and the religious learning activities, uh, religious learning center, sorry, and the Muslim residentials, we were kind of working on it, pa, on what program would best fit them. I see uh, Francis. So, um, in this slide, sir, um, in the Muslim religion, kasi water symbolizes um purity, power, and rebirth. And so, aside from relocating the mosque near a body of water, we took the opportunity um, to make um, or turn the the um, glass window that we in, um, planned initially into a fountain to serve as an extra cooling element for the public space that we have for above and for the most um, below. And we also considered kasi sir na yung Muslim brothers and sisters natin, they wear um, very long garments and layers of clothing so we wanted to um add an extra cooling element in the mosque aside from um the mosque being passively cooled by the um breeze from the passive river and we also reflected on the feedback that we got last term yung sa defense um yung sinabi ni sir jerry about um the yung integration of cooling spaces in the in public spaces and kaya we came up with the idea of um, transforming the glass window that we had initially for the mosque into a fountain and so uh, next slide please this one answer is ano yung concerning acoustics of a mosque and so um Originally, kasi yung mga mosque, um, yung domes nila, parang it serves as like um, parang a megaphone that amplifies sound. Yung inamplify niya yung bosses nung yung nung head nung prayer sa harap. And um, we wanted to parang integrate that with within the design of the mosque that we created. And at the same time kasi um yung symbolism ng um dome sa mosque is it parang it serves as like uh, the symbol of heaven or like the vault of heaven and we wanted to um parang um establish that by opening up the parang ceiling and making sunlight enter the ano, parang the prayer space inside the mosque. And so um, that's it. And next slide. So um, oh, here's the actually our initial layout of what we imagined for the programs. So when it actually comes to religious mosque, it's uh, most of the space is dedicated to males because um. Like since in the Muslim community, males are considered like the protector of the family, like matasin tingin sa kanila. So most of the prayer space actually 
dedicated or required to them. Yeah. Unlike compared to females, na um, most females like only have to attend the mosque uh, once a week. But for males, it's more than that. So um, we already have yung what Francis said. We established like a center communal space for the for the mosque, which faces like the Mecca. So you can see the north orientation. So dito dapat tapat sila. And aside from that, um, since yung purpose like for the minaret, this is also where the officials go up the minaret and call for like what they call for the people when it's time to pray. So like there's like gonna be a pathway going here. So it's also like a water canal chamber since we have ideas for the Pasig River that goes through this um like a like a chamber. So it goes the area as well. And aside from the men's communal space, since um it's not um like of course Muslims or mosque would have like uh supplementary materials. So we actually place like an archive right here. It's not much, it's not like a library or museum, it's just a space for the, yeah, basically for the materials for the, for during mosque. So we also place the, like the women's communal space on the second floor, since it's required by, um, by Muslim standards that men and women uh, pray in separate, like separate areas. While as you know, for the children, it's, it's actually just optional, but most of the cultures in Islam, they place children under like learning centers to teach instead of like to pray. And this one, the one is the courtyard, which was Francis was referring to. So what we actually had in mind since aside from the cooling effect and the mosaic that, uh, that shows like the Islam culture, we really wanted to create this courtyard, courtyard open, open space to everyone, which is connected to the topography that was uh, like here. It rotates the topography. Since most Muslim um, cultures, especially mosques, are very private, but we wanted to inform, um, uh, like open up to people, like communicate to them regarding our own, like regarding the Muslim culture. So like I, the best um, program for that would probably be an open courtyard or in Muslim culture, they call it the sun. And um, since it's also a courtyard, the minaret is also beside it. So it's like easily communicated. It's easily communicated. So when the minaret calls for them, most people would be in like a public space, like the courtyard connected to the topography. So it would allow them to actually go to the mosque and pray. And um, since yung courtyard, we actually wanted it to integrate with the topography since one reason why yung, um, yung circulation within the topography is actually a pathway for people from the waterfront development to the San Miguel area. So it's like, a so it becomes like somewhat a required pathway to walk through. So people actually be interested as they walk by and then they see like a Muslim community integrated with like a public space. So um, this is basically our initial layout on how we visualize yung design that you were able to do. So um, wait, I have a photo. So this is like one of the renders. So we actually started with like this type of uh, like window cage because we didn't, re uh, we didn't design it that it's too like small holes. Because we wanted to define, we wanted to define the dome inside. That's why one of the reasons why we actually made um, a reverse dome, sort of like a dome placed within the mosque, not above it, because we wanted to amplify yung sound so that it's easily reverberable to the people when yung official starts speaking. And this is basically. So this is basically the public space as it connects to the topography of the people. Although the site topography is not uh, final yet, but uh, since most of the other programs are connected, are physically connected and communicated through the, through the topography, but um, we also wanted them to connect in a way that the programs can be interrelated based on the chart that we presented, like this one. That's why we were researching on how to like think of a program per per typology. 
So the um these one are just um basically rented. So what we actually have envisioned is like this can be the courtyard with um landscaping and then the fountain flows from here, one direction going in there. So that way not only does the like the Pasig River close the inside of the mosque, but like the fountain on top that symboli that symbolizes purity also um also cools like the inner chamber of the mosque. So um, that's it for what we have for last week and this week, sir. We are actually thinking on working more on the Catholic Church as well as the other related programs to the mosque for our next, for our next week, sir. Actually, a uh, beautiful development. Uh, but like I said, um, I, I hope that uh, we can really fast track our progress because um, wait lang. sorry yeah let me just uh, of course sir. Yeah, sorry about that. So, uh, because well, I'm happy in the man with what I'm seeing, but don't get me wrong. It's just that uh, we don't want to make it appear as if the... Oh, wait lang. Sorry, sorry. Ibang, ibang na plug kong computer. Sorry. Uh, like I said, um, may, may, you know, we don't want to compare our design for project with this one, uh, but I'm happy that somehow the MOSS typology is um, probably being developed further, and I hope to see more development, but the you know, innovation with it is actually very evident already. Um, yeah, and then I don't think you need to, do you need to develop a project for the church, uh, maybe what you should prioritize more is the fabric building. When you say fabric, it you know it, it's a it's a the typical building that you would see around your city, because uh, this one is a special building, right? Um. Yeah. So actually, the reason why we started with Young Church and Mosque is because. We already had plans for the fabric building, which is a cultural center, but we wanted to research like on the different communities that exist. That's why we were focusing, like for my part, I was focusing on mosque and Kai Francis the Manu Catholic. But we were also in like interchanging ideas. And they also had like ideas for like, for example, Sa Utility with an ideas for like the youth community. So we were actually trying to not only create a typology but research. So that way it would influence our fabric, which is like you know, kind of like the combination of how all communities would actually communicate with, with each other. So that's why we started with the public building at first, sir. Okay, yeah, I understand that. Um, just to be sure that we are on the same page, uh, what we're talking about fabric building is like the typical condominium, etc. But of course, in our setting, in our studio, we're looking for something innovative. So it's very interesting that you are talking about combining the, the cultural features the, of the buildings that you are developing. So uh, I don't know how it's going to translate, but you know, I just want to clarify that when you say fabric building, we're talking about uh, the, the buildings that uh, people will be using on a regular daily basis, such as um, their house, uh, the, the apartments, uh, the, the the commercial establishment etc like when you're walking around the city this is the the the, the typical building 
uh, context that you are surrounded with. Do you know what I mean? Then you just have different transmutation. Yes, sir. Right. That's okay. That's yeah. good. So I hope that. Sorry, it's been complicating because uh, like every week, parang nalito din kami sa typologies. Pero we kind of get it na for the past two weeks. Okay. Okay. So yeah, that's good. So I'm, I'm curious uh, to see that uh, next now because if you, the moment you make a walk through, I mean that's you know if you are creating a movie. You basically just focusing on a special building, whereas it's supposed to be an experience of the city. So, uh, if I think you need to shift your focus first on the fabric, Mona. But I, I know, but that's your process. Uh, you don't have to follow me if if you think that you need to do the church first because it will inform your fabric. Uh, you may do so. So, uh, yeah, okay. Do you have any questions so far? I'm I'm, I'm happy to with this development. Um, oh, yes, sir. Uh, we are, actually I have like one question now. Pero this is like for like the whole typology. Like since we're, I'm not sure if like if we're required or not. Diba, you were saying sir that we had to finish like maybe at least uh two typologies out of the six. So for what for the other typologies that we don't finish, how will it like impact the other buildings that we currently have? Pero parang wala siyang design sir. Like for uh, example, we don't have a design for the, like we don't have a design for the, for example, the utility. So, ano mangyayari sa utility building sa sa end, sir? That, that's Yan why. Make, that's why one of the main requirement is the fabric building, because it will have, uh, the DNA for that. Ah uh, okay, sir. So, Get some mag- answer. Ah, uh, mag magmutate na lang yung other buildings like there will be, i think i explained it in the group of kevin and tracy last week or two weeks ago that the others will be just a an assumption a mutation like uh, the assumption okay. that sila julian and lance made with the folding uh, folding surfaces last term like like that but this time kasi um, you are processing it, so um, that's why we don't see that folding thing right now with the uh, with Lance and Julian's group. All right. Okay. Get some answer. Thank you, you. Thank you sir. Okay. Thank you then. Si Thank Carlo- you, sir. See si Carlos. And uh... yes, sir. Uh, screen share. Okay. Uh, so, so I guess for us, naman, uh, this week we so wanted to, uh, we wanted to kind of go more in depth on our ideas for our fabric building. So last time we mainly focused on the idea of bokashi composting, which is anaerobic, but doing further research, we wanted to also incorporate aerobic composting. So it's the same thing. Uh, no difference is it takes uh air to. To compost it and so, so it has its own benefits and it actually composts a lot faster and we wanted to include that in many ways or the idea of composting in different areas and designs of our building so it could be through the samples which is like um through like columns that are like filled with greenery and like our waste management system so we'll go more in depth on that later but so yeah in our previous weeks we focused on composting mainly so just as one idea and when we're doing it, we kind of got stuck because composting itself is a quite uh, simple task. And we thought of it as a, we were trying to think of it as a process, but now we wanted to think of organic waste and material and the cycle it goes through. So composting itself is one of the steps in that. So there's vegetation produce, food waste and compost. So um, the different actions it takes to convert the object into these different stages are harvesting, compost, or consummation, consumption, composting, and farming. And then we wanted to relate that actually, that process or that cycle to our stakeholders in the site. And so we wanted to give um, proposed spaces or areas where each of these steps could actually uh, be explored or be experienced by the different stakeholders and what they can benefit from them. So for kids, we were thinking about teaching them the idea of harvesting or uh, agricultural practices, given that the Philippines itself is a very agriculture-centric uh, economy. Like we have all the amenities and the farms, and it's really helped us, especially with our tropical climate. So we wanted to 
uh, reinforce that idea or reinforce the fact that, yeah, it's really in our DNA and it has its own benefits as well. And then consumption for the adults. So we wanted to create food courts and com community kitchen kitchens where they could actually help out the rest of the people in the area. So um, this would mean like, this would also give them jobs, opportunities to contribute and spend their days um, in doing something productive. And then for the elderly, we wanted to introduce them into farming. So farming itself is a uh, kind of low, low maintenance activity. So it's something that you kind of go back and forth with every now and then, but it isn't too uh, energy consuming to uh, maintain the plants in the area. And it could also help them out with their mental space. Like, there have been a lot of researches that show that um, maintaining, maintaining these plants and like, spaces could actually help the mindset and healing of like uh, these people. And these are just some of our ideas on how we could implement it into the design of the structure. So Jazz. Um, so this one's really something that we wanted to incorporate um, into our column. So this is just the basic shape, but later on we kind of like wanted to like mutate the idea more. So it's just going to be a metal framing around the columns, but um, we found a different kind of like plant crawlers, um, plants that climb up the walls, um, something that can climb up um, metal framing that we are going to furthermore um, iterate. Um, but this is something that we found, uh, the Kudu plant, um, arrowhead vine, and the Boston ivy. Um, the Boston ivy and the Kudu are actually um, invasive, uh, an invasive plant species. It's something that we kind of wanted to play with because we're, um, one of our first ideas were using um, the water hyacinth plants um, that, are that are gonna be from the Pasig River. Because we thought, it's hard to if like, yung parang sobrang dami yung, um, parang pieces ng um, invasive plants, uh, it, won't, parang it won't go anywhere. It's just gonna be burned and all that. So why not like, um, find a way to compost it well. Um, these one naman are, are dry plants, something that um, we wanted to, uh, wanted to kind of grow um, dito sa metal framing namin. But on the next slide, uh, we wanted to play with it, um, the idea, so it won't just be like a basic shape of, of that. So first off, uh, we, we kind of like started with this figure um, that goes up to like the second floor, um, kind of like acts as a balcony. Narin. So people could like look over it. Um, we wanted to instill this because uh, we saw it as somehow um, kind of like celebrates um, composting way um, for people to see um, the process of it. Uh, that was it's covered then um, by plants around it. So we kind of like thought. Um, it could be like a, a massive um, um, trash can, but in a sense that it has a, a coding, um, kind of like interacts with people that they could uh, throw their um, different types of trash in there. And at the same time, uh, that could compost and make the plants grow around it. So um, with this, we wanted this form um, or like this metal framing to kind of like um, merge into the architecture around um, like it could turn out to be a wall slowly turning into a ramp on something that could be uh, that, could, that users can walk over to the second floor um, and we kind of like considered uh, the different uh, heights and angles of um, the three main age groups that we are kind of like catering off, uh, catering for um, the kids, uh, adults, and the elderly. Um, so yeah, for, from these figures, we, this is all these are all just speculative in a sense, but um, from the figure five and figure one, I think, um, I mean, me and Carlos were thinking uh, this could um, kind of like be our DNA up to some extent, but yeah, these are all just speculative, but we will instill this. In in our columns. So yeah. 
Yeah, and just to kind of add on to that, so yeah, like it kind of gives the process of like how each person can interact with each other. So for example, the people here on the second floor, yeah, while this is like a big open space balcony for them, it creates the environment for them. Um, they can kind of throw their organic material into here or like incorporate it within the basin. And then that would help grow the plants actually at the bottom, um, like which would create the experience for these people. So they could see uh, as it, um, the process happening and what the plants propagating as well. And this falls in line with our um, like process here. So in between, like this could help out for how maybe this uh, con uh, the organic material from the consumption phase could help out maybe the farming as well. So the farming doesn't have to specifically be in um, set like farming pads, but they can also be done in many different ways all throughout the site. So this is just one of the ways we want to show that. And like, well, yeah, with these different forms, we'll be showing how it incorporates into maybe other parts of the building. Maybe like you can also incorporate to like ramps and like different elevations and stuff to help the people circulate the area as well. And then this is our second idea. So we wanted to, as uh, we slightly presented one last week, we wanted to turn art into architecture by highlighting human interaction and daily life as if it were the design of the structure. So like paintings you see nowadays always show daily life, like not even like uh, spectacular moments, but rather just uh, moments that are relatable to people and like can feel a sense of intimacy with. And we wanted to do the same thing with our architecture because it would showcase as well the, the culture and the interaction between people as it is the main focus of our intergenerational city. So we want to create like the idea of quote unquote transparent architecture that would showcase relations between the community, uh, maximize natural lighting and airflow to propagate vegetation, highlight composing functions of the structure. And we'll also go into the, we'll, uh, we'll not yet go into detail, but we're working on the inclusion of like the Jane Jacobs eye on the street idea. So we'll be further developing our public spaces within the structure and the ground floor to incorporate that idea. But we'll like just mention that later. We weren't able to make a sheet about that. So with our visibility idea, we wanted to make a certain views of the structure to be completely see-through or like transparent, you know, to see these sections. So from where the people would mostly be coming from, that being the road here or the public space out here, you could see completely through the site and you could see the different functions and uh, like people within the site that are interacting. And then from the other way direction, you would see mainly the more uh, typical sides of a building. So there could be concrete, but we'll be um, populating it with our different ideas. We'll be having maybe like plant boxes, balconies, uh, perforated walls to allow airflow. We'll talk about that later as well from in our site analysis we have for the possible like sun carving stuff. But yeah, we'll also be incorporating a, a composting and waste management system into the walls here to act as a design solution. So this is just a sample of what these sections could look like from when looking at the see-through or transparent side. So it also shows like the way spaces would be planned. So the bottom of the areas would be more community function or community centric, allowing for everyone to uh, really interact with each other. And as it goes up towards the harder to reach areas, it would uh, become more private. And same with the outsides of the site. So they'd be more public because they're more seen from the outer areas. And then like, so the only private areas would be these smaller sections that are a little harder to get to. And then, so this is our site. So this, this area here, the highlighted portion is the area we're working with. Just wanted to showcase that in relation to everything around it and this is the solar path so in doing so we wanted to create a like a iterated model like on how it could look like based on different times where the sun would uh pass through the site so we considered uh up here so this was i think the summer solstice and the winter solstice down here that being june i think 19 and december 21 at at 8 a.m and 6 p.m so the maximum or the extremities of both ends. That way we could try to get as much light into the site as possible all throughout the year uh, to really help the plants propagate and create natural environments for the people. And this is also our wind analysis. So 
we notice a huge spike of wind from the east and here. So if you actually see like from here, we actually cut the model in half. We created a valley here uh, based on these two things to really allow wind to or the natural elements to pass through the site. So if you're familiar with a concept called the Bernoulli's principle, it shows that in aerodynamics at least, or in the way wind travels in smaller spaces, it creates low pressure zones or like tighter spaces, which allow wind to pass through at higher speeds or with uh, greater amounts of force and speed. So like an example of that is if you blow like for, with your mouth, like just out into open air, you can feel it, but it's not all strong enough or all that strong. But if you blow through a straw with the same strength, it's actually a lot stronger or you feel it more prominent than when you're blowing outside of the straw. So we want to kind of tunnel the wind and through that to allow for um, better like spaces for the people and to get as much sun as possible, like maximized. And then on the concrete walls, on the more typical sides of the building, we'll have perforated walls to allow the wind to pass through as well. So that makes use of the, these two smaller spikes of wind. So it'll be able to let the site be entirely breathable so that the composting and the plants inside it could easily breathe and propagate and get as much resources as it needs. And then, or is there anything you want to add to this, but Jess, sorry. Uh, no. Um, sir, yeah. those are just uh, the, the one on the, the axonometric basic iteration. It's just, yeah, it's basic. We're going to play with the breeze yeah. block. And then, so these are the, just the way we iterated the model or the sun carving at least. So this won't, this won't exactly be our final form or like our massing, but we will be using it to inform the way we yeah, build the structure like further on. And then this is what it looks like, the sun carving at least next to all the other buildings around it. So it really contrasts and it, uh, it makes it a little more visible or uh, notable. And yeah, the valley in itself, as you can see with the shadows, it does uh, shade throughout the day while still creating enough sun to light out uh, or uh, illuminate certain areas. And then, oh, one thing we forgot to mention, but so yeah, this one here, uh, we'll be playing with this idea with the composting on the sides of the building that are here. So we'll be trying to make a composting, a, a waste management system that you can actually see and uh, interact with from both inside and outside. So like there would be windows um, or like openings in the wall from that so where you can see like the waste maybe being dropped into the wall or in the waste management system incorporated into the building. And as it sorts itself out to the composting bins on the outside. So Jazz, if you could explain that a little bit more, if ever, or if I got it already. It's all right. Hmm? It's, it's all. I, I don't think I have to add anything. Okay, well, yeah, so we'll be further iterating that and creating diagrams for that soon. But yeah, that's generally what we have so far. Okay, uh, can I look at the sheets regarding the composting? Uh, I mean, this one or this yeah, one? All of, yeah, it's okay. Forward and, for, and consumption. Okay, forward. Forward. Okay, forward. Okay. Uh, okay. I think, th is, that, is that all that you have for composting? Um, well, sir, like, you know, with this one, we just want to find ways to really create a process in the experience of the site. So ways for these people to interact and get their own uh, needs out of the composting process and ways for it to interact or lead to one another. So like the different spaces in the structure, uh, while they have their own like, needs and um, individual functions for each stakeholder, they will all somehow contribute to these as well. So that could be either through educational play areas, retreat seminar spaces, agricultural space, food courts and com community kitchens, and agricultural space, farming-centric public spaces, and the like. They said these are good, man. It's just that uh, what I'm trying to teach you is that after defining uh, what this is all about, uh, the next stage for that you need to do is to imagine the the moments and the events happening 
while you are doing this because that will inform the spaces if you are able to define the visual cues for it. For instance, you're in a restaurant, is it coming from the kitchen? Then probably create a diagram that shows that. And then uh, do you need uh, height or gravity to sort of transform at uh, the transport or, you know, um, bring the, the, the garbage, etc. Like, you know, these are all common sense um, process. In a way, you just need to create a diagram for it so that it is very clear on space or on paper. So uh, because right now you have the general idea, but it's not translated yet on how it's going to be physical or visual. You have an idea. I like the idea of that. Can you move forward the, the sheet? I really like this. Uh, um, this is already the finished product. If, you, if you're just uh, FYI, no? Uh, but but uh, the process in order for you to get here is not defined yet. That's what I'm looking for when it comes to the composting thing. What's the first thing that you would do if it's going to be in a restaurant? So uh, do, you, do, you, do you segregate first the the organic waste, etc. So, so what kind of a receptacle are you going to design for it? And how do you transport it to the main composting sites? Or is your building going to be the composting facility of it, for it? That, you know, it's part of the building, but it's not really just an ancillary or an extra facility, but the entire fabric or the entire system of the city uh, automatically do that so that... Uh, you know, it's a, it's a, the entire city is functioning that way. So uh, yeah, I'll stop there, Muna. Did you get what I'm saying? Uh, do, you, do you follow? Uh, yes, yeah, sir. We we kind of do know. I guess like especially with this slide, like um, we were trying to do that. It's just we maybe failed to explain maybe like the difference in levels and stuff like because like the way I at least I thought it in my head, we space up here would be could possibly be like yeah the food court area or the community kitchen where um they make use of the different produce that's grown on the site and then the different scraps they have or the food waste that they accumulate through that they could dump out through this um public area mm -hmm. like through the balcony and that would be their way of exemplifying it with composting while also furthering the beauty of the level below so like the it fill up with their kind of composting material and then the plants here like that surround or latch onto the metal frame could grow and like suck the nutrients out of that and that then would help propagate the area here and beautify the area here so the people here would see the plants growing well as well as what makes these plants grow like as it's being thrown into it okay it's beautiful no so um i, I guess just like what i said last week when i gave you that an exam that example uh this is the finished product which is really nice uh, but the beauty of all of this is not the finished product, but actually the process. Mm -hmm. So the way I'm seeing is that figure one refers to commercial, figure two refers to something. How do you organize this information? So because this information mm -hmm. will become the intelligence of your design. Do you get it? So yes. if you sort of himai what figure one is, so maybe you start with a bubble diagram, like a diagrammatic thing, like eating, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, uh, buzzing the I know the table and then you know, but in a way you're trying to identify each of the processes and then how it translates to this. No, but these are all a uh, process sheets. Uh, but I understand that you know we think fast. All of us think we try to imagine the spaces right away, uh, which is also good. But I just want you guys to backtrack just in case uh, you might miss something that provides an opportunity for design as well uh, because this is just one part of that building that you are looking at. Uh, you'll never know. You, you might be able to design something else. Um, like figure four, like what is the reason why it looks very different from figure one? You know what I mean? So there has you need to provide that link. Uh, and that's how we show the integrity of the design, uh, the intelligence of the design. Yes, sir. Okay, so like we have to show them in, in the process how we got to this idea yeah. and like, like how it relates it? to the spaces around it. 
like you need to did like like I said what I pointed out earlier uh there should be no gray area you should be sure what figure one is figure on if the first if it's um a product of a commercial process figure two if it's a product of a residential situation uh figure four what what is it you know so you need to because we're science based so it has to be based on something right so uh and the more you are familiar with that process the more that you can create uh based on science so uh like create if you want to create something very interesting such as figure five or figure four um at least it's not arbitrary it's something that you studied all right yes sir so yeah, we'll go more into detail on that next uh, kasi, week because kasi, kasi you never know uh, baka in between that process like the the process between uh the eating and then uh going to the to this composting pit uh baka meron pang design opportunity and you just looking at the ending which is composting right so uh you never know so uh yeah and then uh the other one is can we go to the 3d of that zone of that district showing that uh build, interesting building i know the the zone uh, the 3d axonometric ah uh, this one sorry yeah that one okay so this is going to be a special building that right yes sir it's supposed to be community center or like area of play for like where everyone could interact with each other like maybe like on weekends and such okay so uh recently i've been uh, actually uh looking at like typical buildings in scandinavian countries like uh even though the special building special buildings they started looking like typical buildings so uh, i think you need to ex- if this is going to be a special building and creates that the place making capability like when you are in that piazza diba you know if it's a church you know if it's the ayuntamiento or if you know you know it's a government building you know it's really imposing you know so you need i'm not saying that this is not like that uh but since it's still early in the design development stages uh while i'm not really averse to this process i really like what i saw and the integrity of the process uh like i said since it's still very early try to look at it how this is viewed from the street level since you have all of this street um layout how this is going to be experienced how it's going to be viewed as an important building uh the reason why i mentioned those scandinavian buildings that they are important office buildings some of them them are library but it can be dismissed as a fabric building uh so how how do you not make this look like just part of the fabric uh that it is an important building we're not looking for something iconic and we're just looking for something that is that has the quality of a place maker um although i have yet to see uh the the fabric building uh dna when i'm looking at the other buildings aside from that uh, aside from uh, um aside from this cuz this is your place maker right this is your uh yes sir yeah so i, I you can see that these are all the fabric buildings just by looking at it no face value wise you know but it's but of course we don't want to settle with it because it's a fabric building that everyone can think of you go to mckinley with the fake venice facade so in terms of uh, uh intelligence and design intelligence or quality it's on that level pa because we're just talking about arcades uh nostalgic quality of old cities etc um well it hasn't been processed yet uh, but what if the fabric building is based on an idea that you will propose eventually so i'm curious how this will transform all of these things of course you just you just need to develop one and then the others are going to be just transmutations just like the other buildings that we see here so uh yeah so keep developing the 
the special building uh i think it still has a lot of potential you did the right thing you started well so uh you just need to continue it and then you know like i pointed out with the other groups uh look at the fabric building already at this stage because it's also as important okay yes sir okay thank you zacharias and uh, carlos so uh okay mac and abigail are you ready mac abigail joanna uh tj so let me know who wants to go next sir, can we say go ahead go ahead go ahead next coming sa kanila sir all right okay so for the presentation we have today we came up with um two types of buildings and the idea behind it is more technology based so for example for the material we chose electronic waste because it's been um, conducted by a couple of engineers stating that there have been millions of discarded mobile phones every year and um in 2021 alone there's around 24.9 million units of discarded phones and just on phones alone for one year so the idea behind it is that less than five percent of waste disposal is properly recycled in the philippines and e-waste is known to be very prominent in landfill so we came up with an idea to make use of these um, mobile phones, printers, and computers, and reuse them for construction purposes. So there's a concept called smelting. So on the picture on the left, it's a picture of the Passer factory in Leyte. So Pasar is the only copper smelter and refinery in the Philippines and it's the first in Southeast Asia. So smelting is basically creating more refined metal products from reused um, metal electronics such as phones and computers. So the process behind it is first off, it starts with e-waste assortment. So discarding the plastics from the metal parts. And then the second one is demanufacturing. So demanufacturing came from the idea that you need to remove the hazardous parts from phones and um, computers. And then the next one, it's to shred the materials to make them more finer for reconstruction and then the third one in the smelting uh, the fourth one in the chart in the smelting process is the charge attachment so again the charge attachment it's reassorting the different parts of a metal product and then you separate those products into different categories such as plastics versus um, metals. And then for the smelting process, the factory that organizes the East e-waste sends it to smelting factories all over the world like China, and then there's one in the Philippines, and then they sort it out into reprocessed new products. So what we came up with was to use the concept of smelting and use it for construction um, materials such as the metal wires or maybe the rebars or the supporting curtain walls at the very facade of the building. So it's fabricating buildings with sustainable metals. And then we also came up with the idea of um, integrating the smelted metals with stone. So Intramuros or Manila is very well known for 
its use of so uh, stone, given that its nickname is the city of stone. So this stone specifically, it's the volcanic tuff, or also known as adobe soil in the Philippines. So it's an earth material that comes in two forms. So there's the fissured and slabs of rock. And the Spaniards actually made use of this rock because volcanic stuff is very abundant in Metro Manila. And then it also has um, properties that are weatherproof, it's earthquake proof, it's fireproof. And I think it's also nice for ventilation of air. We wanted to make a hybrid of the metal wires and the volcanic stuff for the fabric of the building. So stone and metal, we combined the two to like make a porous material. The metal is more of the, how do you say, the skeleton of the facade where it, whereas the stone it's more for ventilation purposes it can also be used for geothermal energy so the perforations in the metal mimic the porous exterior of stone material so the stone and metal hybrid can be used for sunlight and air circulation Okay, so the typology that we came up with was to provide um, a digital library. So the site location we chose, um, I looked into the zoning of the city and the one that was designed by the previous um, master plan in Artlist 5. And we saw that there was an opportunity for a site right by the universities in Manila. So we chose a site that's located by the offices, by the educational institution to benefit them through um, computers. So the digital library, it's a digital infrastructure. So the main goal is to provide a public access it's a hub for innovation, technological advancement, productivity. And we wanted to provide an opportunity for non-gadget users. So since we're providing an, an opportunity for them, it's a, this building can serve as a tool for educational and emergent um, resources and provide Wi-Fi for those who don't. Um, we came up with this idea because we are currently in a digital era, so we wanted to reintegrate technology in the city of Manila and provide um, a resource for those who are lacking with um, the tools for computers for work and to uh, motivate them to be uh, innovative in the technological world. So for example, with this cross section, um, at the outskirts of the facade, it could be made out of repurposed metal and adobe soil brick curtain walls, meaning for ventilation. The facade, it's made out of the repurposed e-waste that we were talking about. <laughs> It's made out of the smelted um, digital phones or smelted computers. And with this program, we created a learning center that is um, accessible by the general public. So it's also um, a computer library. That's the main idea to provide a digital hub for everyone. Okay, so since we are in a digital era, we wanted to create a hub for innovation and 
learning. So it supports the new era of gadgets and online work. Um, so since everything is online now, um, it's somehow the program filters the lack of digital awareness from the Philippines and support them through a global scale so that um, the city of Manila becomes more competitive in terms of technology. So it's an open library, an uh, open laboratory concept um, to transform digital technology into the hands of Manila. So for the building form, we didn't really come up with a concrete form, but what we were trying to do was to create a public accessible building that allows for a dynamic program with you know the shift of face to face to online um, buildings and at the same time it's responsive to the climate of the Philippines which is usually humid or hot. Justin do you want to explain? Uh, it? Okay so for uh, the re uh, research center. So we placed, uh, we placed it there, right underneath, I think, uh, Araceros Park. So we placed it there because we've noticed that it's, since it's near Intramuros, there are, I think, uh, two or a few <clears throat> universities in there, uh, also accessible to the other parts of Manila. So in for this is also encouraged for those who are students who's also taking, you know, science. Um, uh, so that they will be encouraged also, since so we're gonna add another program there for like, uh, I think a uh, library that would help encourage them to not just only uh, indulge yourself to books and stuff, cause they're like in, you know, um, in Joanna's, uh, uh, in the structure that we proposed, this is the one that's digital. So we would want to also propose the, the, the traditional way of reading books, cause not all, can I think can be accessible to to the internet or somewhere you have to pay for you to to get it. So I think this will be another resource for uh, knowledge. Next. Okay, just to add to what Justin said, we located the nature reserve center um, across the Pasig River and also specifically adjacent to the Arrozeros forest to make use of their resources for research purposes okay so uh this will be our, like uh another uh spatial uh diagram uh, we changed it so since we have like um at least a somewhat solid idea so what can we incorporate for this uh structure uh, we're almost getting to our final um form we're just having a few fixed already so we just gathered some ideas and other spaces that we would incorporate to uh, private and public. So for uh, private, we've given like um, other than tropical research, um, uh, what I call this labor laboratories for each um, types of studies that can be managed by um, biology or plant and psychology and stuff. And then next would be, there's like a public part that can be engaged to both um, students or uh, doctors or scientists that would help at least um, uh, gather more um, research for bo uh, both aspects of public and private. There's also, um, we added a conference room um, auditorium so just in case that you wanted like uh, something to talk about meetings and stuff um, just in case like group works also students are also encouraged so it's not just incorporate like a library but then also a good place to um we want to like add social interactions to it like if we can add that yeah add to add to what justin said so the nature reserve center it's mostly um, a private access building, but we also wanted 
to allow um, the public to come and view it in this week. So maybe for the university students or the government to take partnership with the program. So it, it's for technological advancement and innovation when it comes to tropical research. So the programs could be for um, observing soil sciences around Manila, herbarium, the study I think of um, plants, I'm not sure. Or I think it's arboretum where they study plants and its use. And then we wanted to integrate um, commercial uh, conference rooms and libraries for gathering and exchange of knowledge. So uh, for our, uh, what we based on our new form this, um, this research uh, center is that, right, uh, right Joanna mentioned that um, Intramuros is like a, a city of stone. So we would want to like try to incorporate that here since it's also um, good for like what you say parang blending into uh, nature. So this is what will come up so like uh, a porous kapan type of rocks from that metal sheet. So when we like combine it, so it would form like a connective um, parang rocks that would be like stick together but then connected by a bridge. So it would look somewhat uh, like this. Uh, Next slide. Uh, just to add to what so the form it came from the anatomy of plants and stuff wherein they're not really um, in a certain pattern so we wanted to somehow integrate that with the program speculation wherein the placement of the laboratories are scattered amongst the nature so that whenever they're going outside of the laboratories, they're exposed to nature itself. Uh, so this is what we've come up so far since uh, a change. So those were like um, the bridge that I was talking about that would connect to each. Uh, I think we might add a few more uh, 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 fix. Uh, we have more, a few more clicks. So I think by next week, we could come up already with our final um, form. And those pillars would also elevate them. Uh, the one that presented earlier, uh, with the one with the uh, sto stones and mesh, uh, together with mesh um, uh, on wirings. That would at least uh, help incorporate and the use of materials that would help um, blend or not just blend but also be at least for accessible for like if ever there's like research there that you would like to study about stones and other than trees as well. For the form, it's not really final yet, but we wanted to make you so like the organic anatomy of plants wherein there's no specific pattern um so it's more so connected with nature itself so it's on stilts so that it won't disrupt the forest itself and then it's more connected with and camouflage with nature so whenever they're going outside of the laboratory they're exposed to nature. So uh, this is what we've uh, made an example from the inside. It's just um, a small part of the structure that we've, uh, we've attempted to see what it will be like inside. Uh, so this, uh, we've incorporated like the porous type of parang wall or, and also there will be also like a pillar type ganon. So that there on the right side, like what we proposed before. So there's like uh, holes. So at least we don't use that much, um, you know, electricity for, you know, uh, air conditioning, but we could also at least use the um, parang wind that we're taking advantage of since we're um, uh, near the nature. 
So, di ba, usually pag ganun, it's usually uh, humid or mahangin pag uh, there's like uh, a forest around. So, we would like to take advantage of that. And also, we would like to also take advantage of the view outside so that also while you're taking also consideration of your new knowledge or researching, you could also see maybe an example outside using uh, the different kinds of habitats that would incorporate your study, especially for those uh, uh, students taking up um, science. But there's all, but also not just students, also others are encouraged to you know read or maybe research for those who are taking interest in taking up similar courses or maybe just uh, doing some homework from their school that's in regards or a topic about um, this, like geography and you know, geology or something. Um, and then so next would be uh, like a section of uh, ideas that we've also add, wanted to add. So since we've, uh, what do you call this, uh, scrap gadgets, so we might as well um, uh, use old scraps of metal to form um, as you say, parang, another than other than piping as well, but other scraps of material that would help us incorporate also gather rainwater <clears throat> and also the use of parang water wall. I, I, I don't know what you call that. A parang water wall because parang we've also researched right pag gating sa library. <clears throat> Usually, people are you know focused and. I think there's, there might be a slight pressure on focusing on what's the task, on what you have to do. So we do want at least a some sort of parang white noise at the back. So at least uh, it would ease up the stress. Because <clears throat> usually li libraries are uh, usually quiet. But we would want to break that in a way that it's subtle to at least alleviate stress because <clears throat> uh, based on uh, another research is that parang nature sounds or like um, water or other parang minimal sounds that would block off <clears throat> uh, major noises can also alleviate uh, parang be less stressful. So it can help you like, okay, uh, a bit of a focus and be less pressured to what you're doing. Well, if this parang lessens your stress, at least you can focus more, at least grab more um, knowledge and also interact better. So um, we would also uh, add, uh, I'm not add, uh, fix up the science labs as well, so that at least not only that we're all focused on knowledge, but also social space for interaction that it would help, you know, uh, promote uh, learning from each other, right? I mean, I think we'd be better to learn more from different experiences, especially from different um, schools. So this is uh, encouraged to at least <clears throat> interact to one another that would help at least widen or maybe help you engage with new information, not just from the books itself and also from the digital library, but also help from different parang social backgrounds and studies. You would want that, but you want that. So that's what we have for this week, sir. Hey, Elsie, thank you for that presentation. I really like the amount of work and effort that you put into it. And I think... Uh, the, the first building was really impressive. There's a lot of ideas. I also like the drawings. Uh, there's so much uh, commitment to it. Uh, so can we go to week uh, 6 dash 5? So, uh, and then, wait lang, huh? so, okay, forward. I just want to see, I just want to review the, the slides. So, okay, forward, forward, so, okay, forward. Okay. Can, can we go to this section? This is just, this is the actual section of your project already, of the library. It's just a reference, sir, but it's not yet final. Okay, okay, sige. Uh, where did you lift this from? 
So I made it, sir. Ah, cool. Uh, ayos. Sige. Um, siguro, uh, kasi you guys are doing the in- 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 innovative route. So uh, when you do when you do the innovative route, we deal with realistic conditions. So uh, c- can you move forward? This is actually good. Huh? So move forward, Tayo. Sige, forward. Uh, this, uh, um, y- when you mentioned that there will be an open space at the ground, This one. Uh, forward. So your your special building is a library, right? Yes, sir. A digital okay. library. Okay. Na imagine ko ni tanong ni Sir Jerry Jan. Uh, like how is it really relevant in today's culture? And you made it digital, no? So, what will make people go there if you know I can simply browse at the comfort of my home? Do you know what I mean? Yes. So you need to answer that very uh, confounding, relevant issue with that. No? So otherwise, it will be just a white elephant, meaning it's just a beautiful building with nice, nice lounges. So, but it will be a useless building. So uh, try to answer that question. If not, you know, probably think of another typology. So, uh, but if you are able to answer that convincingly with a good argument, well, and do so. Uh, when it, like I said, when you do a innovation project, the realistic condition set in because if you notice the explor- explorative type, we're dealing more with uh, a lot of research that has to be translated into something very creative. So the process is very relevant. The, the things that you did here are process based still. It's good that it's still process-based, uh, but since uh, we're not looking for a creative synthesis of that, um, like a, an exhaustive creative synthesis, um, you need to deal with the realistic condition. Let, let's say, uh, can we go to that, uh, no, to that diagram earlier that you just exited? No, that, the, 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 that one, like that. So we're dealing with lost um, saleable space. So uh, you cannot do this if it's going to be a realistic situation uh, because if I'm the investor, I could earn a lot of money with that ground space, ground floor space because, because it's where the foot traffic is. You know what I mean? So uh, it's so easy to propose that. I mean, we're, we're not the only ones who are thinking of this idea that you know, figure all the ground floor space, but we're not really addressing the basic issue here, which is basically the financier looking at the profit. So how you need to maximize 70% to 30% uh, saleability. So we're not closing our doors to this idea, but when you're looking at this, you know, you can argue that probably 50% saleable, 50% non-saleable, but when you go to the actual volume at the second floor, you still have non-sealable spaces there. So in total, you only have 40% feasible spaces in this regard. Do you, do you get it? Sir, when you say 70%, you mean 70% saleable? Po? Like livable space that you can sell. For instance, in a condominium, uh, the common spaces, the elevator are non-sealable. So that's how the developers are reviewing the design. Sometimes they don't care about how the outside looks like. You know what I mean? They care about uh, the percentage of saleable and unsaleable. It's all about the numbers. So how do you deal with that reality uh, in this innovation route? So, uh, yeah. So I say, like I said, it's easy to propose ideas like this. I mean, it's good. The intention is great but it's not going to be built. Kasi ang, inno- ang innovation, guys, the conventional project, it's all about reality. And part of that, how th- kasi it's not innovation if you're not going to deal with reality. And one of them is numbers. One of them is feasibility. So how do you maximize the saleability of, of this building? And he still, and also, I need to keep, point out, I need to point out you have a lot of open spaces in this layout that disregards the master plan. 
the master plan needs to map because the master plan also has the 70 to 30 percent efficiency ratio that is required so this one totally disregards probably this is only 20 percent if that entire rectangular square is the is the actual plot in that master plan master plan basically you just occupying 20 percent and the 20 percent you only have 40 percent saleable areas do you get it yes sir so you need to deal with that i mean all the good ideas are good so so we're okay with that but how do you manage that in a way that you're working with realistic parameters one of those one parameter is that the master plan that you're working with uh one of the ways to respect the master plan of that proponent of your peer is to obey and sort of uh, work around that block. Kunyari, triangular block yung kinu kunyari, tri this is located on a triangular block. So you need to maximize that. So what is the 70 per if you can make it 100 percent Because you have to remember ang, ang computation ng developer 70 to 30 percent. So uh you need to Kasama doon lobby, ah, guys. Kasama doon yung lobby. So, uh, that's the reality of it. Do you get it, guys? Yes, sir. So, that's why uh, you may ask, how come, sir, but yung explorative, walang ganong condition? Because, yung explorative kasi, yun naman ang, uh, in a way kasi, ang in exhaust ko is the process. Try to, uh, try to imagine if you don't have that, if we have that limitation, uh, hindi may exhaust yung process na yun. So in a way, in my studio, on steroids, yung explorative process, pero ang demands for the process and the demands for innovation is very high. Do you get it? So, uh, but ito yung drawback if you do the innovation or conventional route. We're dealing with real-world conditions, real-world problems, and real-world parameters. They get it. So um, uh, otherwise, I won't be teaching you the right way. Because if I'm just going to approve this proposal, well and good. Hindi siya matatayo. Because lugin lugi yung magpipinance. Do you follow? Yes, sir. Oh, so you need to work with that. Huh? If you choose this route, but explorative. Yeah, nga lang, di ka, di pa ka, iba kasi dito, if you notice, kahit sila nag-struggle pa eh. uh, It will take time and it will take a lot of effort and processing. Okay, siguro pag na-solve yung numbers, uh, 70 to 30, yung malapit na tayo matapos yung project ninyo, but it's not, it's far from that reality. Still far from that reality, Okay. Sir, what if we um, integrate more public programs with this form? Like publicize this program more? Would that make it more saleable? No, publish. When you say publicize, it's not saleable. Mm, okay. When you say publicize, kunyari condominium, with the residential units and the commercial units. You need to think of uh, the developer in mind. How am I going to earn? In a condominium, ba, nabibenta mo yung lobby? Hindi siya nabibenta, di ba? Hindi niya rin nabibenta yung hallway. Although may mga, may mga iba pang competitions yan. Uh, that's what I want to... Pag you say public, guys, park, hindi siya saleable. Kaya the moment you pick up a plot, a block in the master plan, you need to maximize that. You need to occupy that entire block. In a shade. Kasi nakakumpit yung master plan ng mga peers mo na, na, ng efficiency ratio. So you need to maximize that so that naka 70 to 30% yung saleable or non-saleable. Guys, am I, am I still on? Ayun. Naghang ako. Yes, sir. Okay, sige. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so, ito yung, ito yung guys, hindi ko ko yung pinapahirapan ha. Ito kasi yung, ito kasi yung Ano eh, uh, I'm not doing justice uh, to what you're supposed to learn if we're not going to push for innovation. I like the ideas that I saw earlier. Do that, but deal with the numbers. 
So in those limitations, how can you be creative? Do you follow? Like how can you still employ those ideas? So yeah. So uh ayun, kasi nag -ano na tayo, design six na tayo. Eh. In fact, these guys, uh, if they're with me in design seven, we will be dealing with the same thing already. Tinitrain ko sila mag-explorative somehow para yung discipline na pagiging creative sa exploration if we're dealing with numbers already, naka-inculcate with them, it's going to be intuitive with them to innovate already. But this time, they have to deal with numbers. But that's going to be next time. Right now, kasi I'm exhausting everything, all their efforts to be creative uh, with the training they had for the past two terms. And I'm open if you want to be explorative. But, you know, the expectations are going to be different. Uh, but since we are, you know, uh, I, I can see that it's going to be, a, like, ganun din sila, ano, sila Jericho. Although Jericho and Martin were with me for two terms already, they chose the conventional route. The moment they present their fabric building, you know, they have to deal with the efficiency ratio. All right? Yes, sir. In fact, I like the idea, rin, eh. Um, Like, next term, probably half of the project will be low-cost housing. How do you deal with numbers? How do you really make it really low-cost and yet interesting? So that's going to be next term. But, uh, we'll, yeah. but for now, we're not going to do computations. Ngayon kasi, puro eyeballing lang tayo. But I think you guys can agree with me. Uh, uh, call that? Agree with me. Um, Joanna and Justin, that this is not 70-30, right? Yeah. Okay. Sige. Is, do you have any questions, guys? Um, none for me, sir. Okay, but uh, this is excellent. For now. Don't don't let me wrong, but uh, counting ano pa, counting uh, processing pa. Develop it more, yeah. Yeah, para mas maging, kung baga, uh, maganda yung ideas nyo, pero hindi siya matatayo. Ang goal natin, matayo siya later on. Like, how do you create something that is this innovative na matatayo siya? So, you need to deal with that eyeballing first na 70-30. Alright? Sige. Do you have any questions, guys? None, sir. Okay, None sige. None for now, sir. Okay. Sige. Thank you, guys. Just Thank you, sir. Sige, uh, uh, Mac, um, Kevin kasi has a, an appointment yata. So, uh, no, sige po. Sige. Sige, go ahead, uh, uh, Ma, uh, Kevin and Tracy. Sige, go ahead, guys. So, meron na ba, sir? Hello? Kita na po ba? Oo, oh, kita na, kita na. Kita na. So, eto, sir. Hindi, na, hindi to like architectural party. We're just showing you like components we, that we are going to integrate with our ideas, which is you know, filtering and cycling water. So, we are going to integrate three components. So, first is like a plant. Second is hard clamps and sediment filtration. So for the plant, we did research like several plants, pero one of them like has more benefits in terms of filtering and cycling wastewater. So this plant is yung gabi, sir, or taro plant. So yun nga, it is known to be to have like a beneficial contribution to filtering and water cycling. Next, sir, is Hard clumps. So hard clumps are known to be uh, filter feeders, sir. So as they eat, they also filter the water. So yun din yung reason bakit ginami siya gusto incorporate. Then next is sediment filtration, which is basically like a mechanical filtration. So Abby, like um, so short research. So the naman is yung uh, growth stages ng Plan. So it shows they develop from a microscopic feature to an actual actual um, 
part time. So next. Um, so this is the average movement of a hard plan. So for a day, it's around 10 to 50 cm, but their movement also depends on the weather. And one plan can filter feed 4.5 gallons of water per day. <laughs> Um, so we research how clams move. So based on the researches, there are four typical trajectory trail of a clam. So the first one is how the majority of clams move. So it's a linear path, then curved movement from left and right. Um, they also move in a S or Z path. And there are also a few that move semi-circular. So next naman, um, these are some photos of clams. So yung first picture is how stagnant clam look like. And yung dalawang picture sa baba is yung visible trail of clams movement. So ito naman is yung... Um, kailangan ng clam at least 1 to 1.5 meters depth of water. And these clams burrow themselves 10 to 20 centimeters deep, um, but also depending on their size. So ito naman sir, it's yung taro plant. Um, yung growth status ng taro plant, and which is also a an aquatic plant and can filter water. Then you maximum height niya and the average proximity of each plant. Um, so So next year, we also studied like how water move in a tank from a inlet of water. So from this research, we did. They like study how like movement of water of, like in different like shape of a tank. So like in source of water in it is like a waterfall type source. So in a rectangular, like based on their like conclusion, um, it like doesn't like circulate throughout the entire tank compared to a circular one. So we did study in casitos because like circulation from like those clams and um plant is also important. So after it is like we did like the massing as you knowing like what those components needs. So this is like the area here. So so speak louder Max sayang yung ah, sige, presentation sige, niya. Okay. Ah sige um <laughs> so ito, like we started with like we start with the massing as you knowing the needs of our like the components of our fabric building so so the the, air, the total area is around 4000 like meters square so medyo nalakihan kami so we decided to like split it in two and we uh, the way we split it is we base it on like the amihan, amihan and abagat which is also like needed in for the, our components so we did like you know, this massing plan next to so like this floor this like building here is like three floors pero like super high ceiling siya. so around mga four meter high so this is a three story then two story and and we carved it so yung way ng pagcarb namin is we like added a like grid sa buong building so that we can easily carve it so when we carve it, we base it on the sun and the wind and also the orientation. And also knowing that we, the idea of ours is like filtering and water cycling, we also consider like how we are going to make the water flow. So like gravity, ganun. so. And through this like void series, uh, we want to integrate like terrain and how we can like integrate those components and the buildings here. So we decided to parang smoothen it. Pero like very initial massing pa lang. So this is like the void like we created. So 
everybody is connected to each other to like create cycle like within the buildings here. So like this is like the section of like how like it can be seen inside. Um, so we imagine it to be like this year, but like we're still not na nagkumagawa pa rin kami ng architectural party. So basically parang ganito namin siya ni-imagine. So nag-start kami sa ganito, like very, very simple pa lang sir ngayon. So like how we can like create a flow and how can we create a terrain through this. So this is basically for, for clumps lang then we incorporated like for the taro and like the sediment and how can they be connected and yun sir medyo like umpisa pa lang pero like medyo imagine namin siya medyo ganito so yun pa lang sir ay yun pa lang sir okay uh, uh, actually the diagrams are really beautiful and so uh, so keep working on this because I understand the, the last set of slides were for uh, the, the special building Saan yung gagamitin yes, yung yes. clamps? Where, where are you going to use the clamps? Sa fabric, sir. Fabric. Sa fabric. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, so, the common building will have clamps? Tama ba? Yep. Yeah, Pwede, sir. Kasi, ano, like, kasi, di ba, idea namin is filtering and water cycling. And yeah. we use clamps and plants for nice. like, okay. natural filtering. Yeah, yeah. Kasi they are nature's mm-hmm. filter. Yeah, so can you can I look at the first slide? It's very interesting. It's a, a very unexpected direction. So I'm curious how this will develop. No, so uh, I, I guess you will. Ha, ha. Okay, freshwater hard clams. Uh, just like the process we had for the plantito plantita, like yes, sir. The, the number the numbers, and if you're going to, do you intend to eat these clams? Yun nga, sir. Iniisip namin, sir. Kasi yung species na kinuha namin is expensive daw from Cagayan Valley. Like expensive okay. species, gano'n. So, pero, okay. But pero, try pero, to find out uh, the reason for the high cost. Maybe because it's yes. rare. You, you don't know. Baka, if yes, it sir, becomes yes, down the road, if it becomes a normal thing in your city, then the, the city became... Ah, alam, pili yata, ano sir, like kaya siya medyo expensive kasi medyo like umuunti na yung numbers nila. Ayun, to, alam exactly. Mo so in a way, and... ayun, exactly. So in a way, it's an, your city is an advocacy to propagate these clamps. And, uh, and then of course, you know, you can expand the program if you can eat it. <laughs> Tapos medyo, ano, <laughs> nasa diagrams, may mga shrimp dyan, pero kasi, like parang may symbiotic relationship siya sir sa ano kasi iniisip namin like may mga fish may mga dumi ang clam so in oh, yeah. filter naman pero may ano so meron daw symbiosis like yung Ganda. mga shrimp kinakain nila yung yung feces ng clams then they clean the clams then ganun okay so, pero baka kasi ma-overwhelm kami dinagdagan okay, clams ka muna clams muna pero uh, as it is yun, sir. Uh, you know it, it's a, yeah. it became very exciting all right good sure. job guys Sige. Salamat, All right. Baka kasi pati yung main building nyo, pwede rin magkaroon ng ganyan kasi kung may yung clam oh. city yan. Kung kailangan talagang dumami <laughs> sila. <laughs> oh, so, we're, we're that ano, open to this crazy ideas. It's all about the process. Uh, oh, oh. Who wants to go next? Sir, me and Janelle will go. Go ahead. Oh, di ba? Si, Oh. Okay, go ahead. Maureen, who's your group mate? Si, si Antea po. Ay, si Antea. Hindi ko na kaya tapos. Sige. After kaya na. Sige po. Sige. Hindi ko nakita si Antea. Ayun pala, sorry. Sorry, malabo na mate. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Good scene. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Okay. Uh, uh, 
I'll preface our week's worth by um, reiterating like the our fab the fabric of our city, which is uh, the enhanced livelihood based on water. So with that, I uh, wanted to expand on how you'd want to explore based on like party, the different forms of water, whether that be um, in the form of droplets, mist, um, waves, waterfalls, um, streams or rivers, and incorporating that into the structure. Also, uh, sort of in uh, incorporating the hydro cycle into our structure, whether that be like evaporation, condensation, precipitation, we created a synthesis for the past two weeks based, generally based on that. Oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, okay, next slide here. Oh, so, uh, it's slow long, but it's there now. Um, so this is what we showed um two weeks ago. Um, our first iteration for our mosque. Um, so this this is the first iteration, but um, we created two more iterations within the past two weeks, which we will show. Up, but yeah, that's the preface, like what we had back then. Next slide. Okay, so um, after that, we fixed our um, potential floor plan, floor plan um, fixing um, the circulation. I think it's glitching. <laughs> okay, sorry. Wait, I'll, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, we, we fixed our floor plan based on, um, the efficiency of circulation. There, okay. Um. So yeah. Um. So I'll explain along the the flow of our program just to um show how one can circulate within the structure before we expand on our party. So from this, uh, in the ground floor, um, where you enter, um, we can reference from the from the notes on the side, but uh. <laughs> Ideally, uh, one would go to the ablution first, where uh, they would have to rinse their. <laughs> sir, I'll share it along. Wait, long sir. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know what's happening. Okay, long wait. <laughs> Here. <laughs> Is it seen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um can you see my cursor? Uh so once you enter the ground floor, you'll have to go to the ablution area where um the Muslim uh people would have to uh, wash, like rinse off before they enter the prayer room. Um, and then 
um, we're planning to sort of have stairs in this area to um, access the second floor where we would have the rice paddies. And from the rice paddies, um, it will sort of become an experience going into the processing, um, milling area. And then um, from these milling stations, uh, they'd have to go out again towards the like, terrace. Um, Bluetooth enabled. Terrorist uh, section. Well, we have a section here, but yeah, um, these terraces are used for rice, rice grain drying and potential alfresco dining before they'll have to go back down towards uh, food banks and the kitchen where sort of from this milling station in the second floor, the rice would sort of descend towards the ground floor where it's more accessible for the kitchen and the food banks. So yeah, that's basically the entire circulation of the space. And then um, these were our previous sheets regarding the um, step wells and terraces and aqueducts, because these were our references for um, the form of our structure, which we iterated further last week. Um, so we came up with a massing and a general look with the incorporating our parties, which I will, which we will expand on later individually. But um, yeah, the Um, if you can see, uh, we still incorporated the same aspects, but incorporated the descending of the step wells to make a sunken experience. Also, if you see the elevation, we're planning to incorporate the terraces to sort of mesh our structures with the terraces in our city. So it creates a cohesive fabric, but we'll be explaining more on this later, just so it's uh, so you'll be able to see it visually when we show the party. Um, and then this for this week, we further uh, illustrated fix the mass. Yeah, illustrated the massing uh, to fit more accurately and everything. Um, so I'll start with our party based on our research on um, the characteristics of a rice, uh, the rice plant. Um, here, you want to explain this? Oh, okay. So, so for this one, um, the way it works is we made a rooftop rice paddy. Um, so the access will be, as we've shown in the previous slide, um, you'll access it from the top part. And then um, this area will be used for Uh, the plantation of rice where we will still be further adapting it um, with terracing and ridges for a better runoff, water runoff. Yeah, we incorporated also like the, um, the depth of the roots of the plant and the sloping was also um, influenced on the optimal ramp. Yeah, so... Um, um, like Janelle said, like all of that was taken into consideration when we were sort of designing uh, this part of the structure. So um, aside, so the only difference in the illustration is that uh, for further reference, it would be less amount of rice to sort of follow the proper planting requirements. Mm, also based on the our model, uh, we inclined it in a way that responded to the sun path towards our site. So uh, our previous iterations failed to accommodate like the shadows that would be influenced from the minaret and everything. So we had to adjust the orientation of the rice paddies based on optimal sun, um, six to eight hours of growth time. Yeah. Uh, exposure. So, 
Yeah, I think that's it for this party. And then this, um, our next party would be regarding the minaret, which we explained before would be a, a sort of emerging of uh, a cup's material, an air well system, and mashabia. So, so for the yeah. minaret, um, the way it would work is the inner funnel would um, be used as a possible uh, rainwater collection system, um, while the outer minaret would work as a wind tunnel. So the wind would enter from through the gaps in the space and it would flow downward. So aside from that, um, we, in general, um, being a humid country, it's more common that moisture is present within the air. So through the possible use of winter, window pane oysters, um, we would be sort of mimicking the water cycle process wherein the heat from the sun would warm the window um would warm the window pane oysters, allowing moisture to collect, which would also allow um, an increase in water collection aside from rainwater. So even when the weather is not, um, when, even when it's not raining, we'd, um, we're still trying to find another system to further increase um, water collection. So um, um, we were able to sort of combine um, the three systems, which is an air well, a rainwater collection, and the wind tunnel. So uh, another aspect is the like um, the forty five angle, a forty five degree angle um, in the corner of the minaret. So that would allow also the increase of volume uh, of wind to enter the structure, allowing for um, better wind flow within the lower levels of the structure. And it would decrease turbulence since, um, it, yeah, there. Next slide. Okay, the next party would be regarding the aquaponics system that we talked about um, before and how it circulates throughout our proposed iteration for the structure. So um, based on the parties that we provided, um, it, the water would flow from the rainwater collection from the air well um, towards the rice paddies, which are located nearby. And then from the filtered water in the rice paddies, it would um, be led towards the ablution area where um, people could rinse off using the filtered water. And then that wastewater would go to the fish pond um, and then the cycle repeats. Um, I'll show the iteration. So um, from here, from the minaret, it would lead to the rice paddies. And then the ablution will be located within this structure. So it goes straight down. And then from the ablution, we have um, streams for um, our fishes. So the cycle sort of circulates throughout the structure. And then um, we also had other ideas regarding the process of rice um, from harvesting to production of um, grains. So one of which is um, regarding the milling process because we noticed that the like the machine of milling does produce a lot of un undesired sound so that reaches up to 70 to 90 decibels and regard like like I mentioned we really wanted to we really wanted to utilize water in means of resolution for a lot of things. So what we 
researched on was um, sound masking using ambient noise. So based on our research, we found that um, ambient noise up to 50 to 70 decibels would increase concentration and focus um, in general, or increase concentration, memory, even sleep or productivity. Um, so we were thinking about this in a mosque setting wherein obviously we wouldn't want the uh, visitors who are praying in the mosque to be distracted by the noise that is going on um, from the rice production. So other than that, we also found that pink noise um, is the type of ambient noise that is more that conforms to human hearing that is more comfortable compared to white noise and brown noise. So pink noise is often associated with the sounds of waterfalls and steady raindrops and is often used in met in the medical field to fix um like cognitive impairment or sleep problems and are often used now in the workplace to increase productivity. So we took that and um, are planning to create uh, the idea of enveloping our, our milling Process. station in the, in the second floor with a waterscaper, sort of like a waterfall um, that descends towards the, down, the, the ground floor to also to respond to the, the idea of how mosques are generally uh, are common to have um, central courtyard waterscapes, which we are also incorporating here. To add to Janelle, another reason we wanted to incorporate waterscapes is because, like she said, um, um, the machines produce uh, really loud sounds. And we've also found uh, studies wherein it states how these sounds are not um, beneficial to the people working in rice mills. So we sort of wanted to also address that problem. Yeah. Um, also to add along another study based on how um, waterscapes was used in an urban setting to, to, well, but except this study is regarding addressing road traffic, but similarly, um, we found that uh, the, it's more prominent to have um, high, high pressure, low frequency waterscapes, such as waterfalls, um, to mask those sounds. So those are the types of water forms that are preferred in masking sounds. And then our, the last sort of idea we have, um, which we're still exploring is the regarding the process of sun drying. And as we can see, especially in the Philippines, the process of um, drying of rice grains is through um, just laying them on the ground and then having them rake through to flip over so that each part of the grain is dried equally. Um, and since we allocated our terraces for that rice grain drying, we thought, what if we could um, not only uh, sort of give a more uh, pleasing look to it, and sort of add a landscaping feature from that act of rice drying and also incorporate the, the visitor's experience to it where they could um, do the activity um, on their own. So what we associated it with initially was the Japanese Zen garden, which um, uh, creates a landscape just by the intentional raking of, of sand and gravel. And from their belief, it would sort of create the, the essence of water and nature, even if it's just um, sand and gravel. So in a sense, or psychologically, the effect would also provide 
to sort of still accommodate the underlying essence of water within the structure. Also, so that the here um I we wrote here it balances the juxtaposition between the need for a peaceful and meditative environment within the mosque, meanwhile having like while having the strenuous physical work of rice cultivation. Yeah. Um, Can you go back to the massing now? After. Right. Um. So yeah, based on all of that. Uh, so. We hope there's a clear visual of this yeah, current okay. massing, but we're still iterating. But um, that's what we have so far. So to add long to what Janelle was saying, like um, the point of the rice also is since we will be having a food bank and kitchen in the lower level, so we wanted to utilize um the crops that we'll be using also to give back to the community since it's common um um it's a common occurrence for um mosques to um like we've said in previous weeks where it's common for them to provide meals for co the community. So we took that also, that aspect of the mosque. That's all, sir. Okay, I think I'm confident with the special building project. I think all the interesting elements are there. Maybe you just can't get over the fact that it is a religious building. It's mm -hmm. all sort of echoes the water collection system that uh, uh, Tracy introduced last time. But uh, I think you still have time and you know more opportunities to make it really uh, dissociate itself from that proposal. So uh, yeah, but I, I think uh, you have a lot of ideas uh, to work with. Um, to sort of make us uh, unsee that. And um, this is coming from uh, my point of view. So uh, because I'm very familiar with the projects that uh, you guys provided me. So yeah, that's my feedback for that. But other than that, I mean, it's, it's on the right track. I'm curious how you're going to develop the, the fabric building. And uh, like I said, I'm encouraging everyone to develop it. But for this project, I'm actually okay with that. And the, the only negative comment I can provide is, is how to unsee the water collection idea of uh, of of uh, Behara. Uh, any feedback, thanks for my for my feedback. Uh, no, 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 not for me. Okay. So. Uh, no, no, man, sir. Obviously. Yeah, so for the fabric building long, it's we sort of wanted to we have the concepts that we're using here. We're sort will sort of be applying also to the fabric building. We just wanted to test it out also on um how we could arc incorporate it into like specialized buildings. So we started with this one. Yeah, because some of the ideas in the specialized building may not be applicable to a fabric building because yes. You know, you know. Uh, anyway, I think you know that already. Um, yeah. so I'm curious how it develops further. Uh, but yeah, I want to see the fabric building actually. Okay. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. guys. Thank you. Thank you. Antea, are you ready? I guess. Okay. I'm then sorry. after, let's go to Bruce. <sighs> Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so yeah, we chose to narrow down our plant with Malungay or Maringa Ole Fera. And basically these are like the broad characteristics of the plant. So first off, it's like a subtropical or tropical climate sort of plant that likes dry and hot weather. So yeah. And then the soil usually used for it is like sandy, well-drained soil. Okay, next. So um, here are like the physical characteristics of the plant. So 
usually the plant or the tree grows up to like 10 to 12 meters and it's said that it's best to start harvest when it reaches 1.5 to 2 meters tall and the width of the bark of the tree is around 40 centimeters in diameter and then the length of the branch is 60 to 90 centimeters. However, since our previous idea was that we wanted to use the moringa or the malungay plant for tea, we tried to, we are going, you know, our direction is that we want to go with um, an agricultural method that intensifies the leaf production of the plant, which is the semi-intensive monoculture production for the, mar, ano, the moringa or the malungay. So for that one, it's because of that um, method of production, what happens is that it involves cutting the branches repeatedly. And because of that, the tree won't be growing past like 1.5 or 2 meters tall. So it would be only around that height instead of its usual 10 to 12 meters. Okay, next. So here's like the timeline of the seed, seed growth, which um, from the planting of the seed germination and then the harvesting. The total for total days that it takes for that to happen would be 63 to 104 days. And um, after the harvesting, because usually what would happen is that again, there's going to be the stem cutting or like the ear cut the plant in half so that it grows more branches. You wouldn't need to um, wait for 35 to 40 days more for the next harvest. Next. Yeah. So yeah, and I also um, tried my best to calculate the yield for the plant. So basically it said that um, at one square meters, which is the space in between the plants for the semi-intensive monoculture method, the plants would produce around five, wait, oh, uh, one to five kilograms of leaves per year. And then you, I narrowed it down that one tree would be producing 2.74 grams a day. And then for the conversion of fresh leaves to malangkai powder, it would take, um, it would take one point, 59 or 2.04 kilograms of fresh leaves to be converted into 0 0.45 kilograms of dried leaves, which means um, one cup, one liter of tea would take eight trees, basically. <sighs> okay, so yeah, that means that like the total amount of trees would probably be 379. However, um, I'm not quite sure if the um, information about it be producing 2.74 grams a day is completely accurate since in your life we do all a malungay tree and I'm not quite sure wait basically I think the tree is much more renewable than the information that we took it from so yeah but basically those are like the estimates of how much how many leaves that can be produced from one tree mm -hmm. Next. Yeah, okay, so putting the logistics of the tree aside, so some of the things that we wanted our site to have is like, would be yung, the idea of yung himay. So in our research, we found out that um, for the most part, it's still not really done by machine that you have to like sift through the malungay malungay using a uh, machine so up to this day it's still used by hand so we wanted to like create some sort of space where it could be done by hand and it could also be a communal and social experience and we also like wanted to allot a space to have tea houses since it seems like um, the tea culture within our country isn't really that strong but it is strong in East Asian countries so we want to take inspiration from that next So other than that, for the malungay itself, we wanted to use a drip irrigation method for the irrigation of the malungay since it's the most, um, it's the best method of irrigating for 
the sandy or the need for a well-drained well -drained soil for the malangay to grow. And we also wanted to use like raised garden beds, which are um, for in order for the um, the soil to remain dry or well drained for the malungay to thrive. Next. So yeah. Bernadette, naka meet ka. Sorry. So again, so um, this is what we come up with last week, like the fifth week. So our programs are commercial tenants, farm area, and the waiting shed. So commercial tenants, nandun yung cafe na rin and production area. And this is what we come up with the volumetrics. So ito yung Himay area. This is the Himay area. We first come up with what if we incorporated the Himay area along with the, with the Malungay, with the, with, with the Malungay farm so that there's a social experience hence and also a, like a nature feeling. Then, okay. um, yeah, basically we just went through like a bunch of volumetric diagrams trying to figure out how we could place the guy within the site. So basically all of them are somewhat oriented towards the Southwest in order for the Malungay to receive the most amount of sunlight within the site. So yeah, those are like some of our iterations from last week before the, yeah, okay, next. So mm -hmm. this is the, our updated bubble diagram or the flow of, of the programs. So the black arrows are the accessibility like like um like which program is connected to this program and the the blue arrow means the view so we wanted the cafe commercial to have an empty rooms to have a view from the farm as well as the vista that is beside the urban fabric so this is our one of our updated volumetrics so we so we actually first we actually state the the court the middle the, the farm to be in the center of the urban fabric so and uh, um, so firstly the, the entrance which connects to the to the streets and the vista <coughs> And also the cafe here is is here because there should be view on the on the urban fabric. And um, the, the the pink boxes are the Himai areas, and the black boxes are the preparation rooms like air drying and like the air drying and storage for for mm -hmm. the malung for, for the processed malungai. Oh, and we actually think na uh, what if below here like this this is the green roof so below here is like um it, it can be accessed by people to go to add to other commercial tenants as well as like another processing like an, another preparation area for for the money guys like the kitchen Okay, so yeah, basically we just went through more like other iterations and then this is the part where we started adding the tea houses since we realized that that could be like an inspiration for the typology. Yeah. Next. So yeah, and then yeah, this is another iteration for that one and yeah, next. And as of now, we settled with this one for now because, yeah, for now we settled with this one and we intend to add or modify it even more um, to fit the creative typology. And um, so this is what we actually 
imagine what the private rooms are since um, we wanted to have the connectivity between between the rooms like even though it's it's a it's it's a private it's a private area people can actually have a communal gathering at at the hallways between at in in the middle of the of each private rooms of, of each private rooms so this is what we imagine the preparation area would look like so Beside the preparation area, we are thinking that uh, close yung mga yung himay area, which um, then we actually came up with, but if we use the wood materials as louvers or this kind of things to to have to, to air dry the malungay as a sort of a process and kasi yung so, so that it can be dried by the sun and by the air because there are gaps there, there are gaps for air. And that's it sir, for our presentation. Thank you uh, for the presentation and I appreciate the effort. But uh, this is not creative typology yet because right now mm -hmm. it is a uh, it's just a shell. It's just a yeah. shell with um, areas for drying areas for we're not looking for allocation of space we're looking for mm -hmm. the changing of the building systems and i think we enumerated the building systems in the previous meetings how do you modify those so, but if it's going to be innovative project it is innovative in a way that you use it on the walls etc but in terms of uh spacing if i'm the financer looking ako because you cannot you know, all of those spaces are not really earning a lot, um, uh, especially when I'm looking at uh, slide number 15. Uh, basically, I don't. Um, wait, see, can, there you go. Uh, it's a lot of open spaces um, from the mindset of the financier. These are all losing income spaces and uh, the ones with the, uh, the only thing that will earn me money is the commercial. Uh, Probably he my preparation, the cafe, the waiting area, not so much, etc. So uh, you need to weigh these things down. No? So if you really want to uh, pursue something that is more realistic, and if it's going to be realistic, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, the what do you call it? Um, probably the the farm might not be even going to be an idea. Uh, because the idea na lang is that you will get your malunggay from from somewhere else and then probably just plant some malunggays on the rooftop because the entire building will be just basically saleable space. Do you know what I mean? So uh, th those mm -hmm. are the things that we need to weigh. So, uh, But if you want the explorative type, uh, you know, this is not it yet. It, because... Um, especially with the allocation spaces, you basically just put it on open space, disregarding the master plan. Uh, and you're not maximizing the master plan as well. Uh, so it's just basically a building with a garden area. So it's not really explorative or creative yet with some with a space that is just a box. So uh, it's not really modifying um, the building systems. Do you get it, uh, Bernadette, Maureen? Yes, sir. Yun. So, yun yung variable. So, if you want the mm -hmm. conventional type, deal with the real world parameters. So, which is, you know, um, but at least you don't have to deal with um, the maximum yield of the malungay. You just, just say that uh, uh, this, this building is going to be um, using these materials uh, it's innovative in this way and then probably will be using you know a, a very good or uh, very unique material for the facade etc but the design should be realistic by, by dealing with those numbers i mean you can still plant malunggay but it's not going to be meeting the numbers anymore you get it yes. Antea. Ante, ha? 
I know you're very honest naman eh. Gets mo naman? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, but I love the presentation because you guys were confident with it and you guys, I mean, when I say confident with it, like you are confident with the ideas that you presented. And uh, ayun, so our role ko lang naman is just to criticize it. Uh, and, and those are the parameters that uh, we are working with. Okay? Sige. Do you have any questions? Okay, sige. Just message me if there's any, okay? Sige. Sige. Thank you, guys. Idrius. Thank, uh, thank you. Thank you. Sir? Yeah. Ready na po. Yes, go ahead. Sige po. TJ. Close lang po yung tab. So so what so once again just a recap from week week four is our location of our type specific type of six typologies. Just so we still haven't changed it yet. We started with we, we for the buildings last typology. We 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 were gonna tackle in using in curved glass, which relies on bedding and tempering. That it can be heated up to into very high Celsius temperatures, and the maximum bedding of angle of circuit is one fourth. So this diagram shows the. So the printer of the and the make or the maker of the curved glass. So our our they are created and constructed. So these are the tiles we, we are gonna use in the in the fabric building. We decided to use these tiles because they, they are considered a, a symbol in the people industry. They are also known for being in bringing in the traditional beauty for the Filipinos, worth of quality and passion. Also included are the dimensions of the tiles, which will be considered what once the floor plan of the public building has been constructed. Their textures can stem from different colors, tiles, and even different kinds of patterns. These are, once again, considered handmade. Also, we, we, we've researched about the usefulness for the diagrid system. As you can see, we, we are using concrete diagrid structural system. It, it can sustain a lot of, it can, it can sustain a lot of durability and and even supports both vertical load and horizontal shear. Now for the blunt, we, we, we decided that we will we will use cilanto or or also known as coriandum sativum in scientific name. It's an annual herb that, that are capable of Growing even if it's placed in a body of water. It it has the ability to purify water, and can absorb types of metals. They are usually placed twelve to fifteen inches apart, and the minimum temperature for the plants these plants to sustain is is ten Fahrenheit. However, it's best that. Get, it can be sustained at 50 to 80 Fahrenheit. This, this diagram also displays the goat chart of the cilantro. In, in, in their first 10 days, they are still in germination stage, all the way to the goat, and eventually the days where they can be already harvested. 
So, so in this table, these are so also the widths of the cilantro, or also known as coriander. This contain corn gluten meal, part party vinegar, cinnamon glove oil, and the limonene. These are, these are the most emergence of the plant, which are to, to be considered. Now for the, once again, for the location, we decided for, for the public building to, to, be, to be two in terms of quantity. One in the left half circle and one in the right circle, San Miguel and Ermita. We decided to place in the center point of the center point of the of the circle because they will allow for for the biggest vista allocation. They they can be viewed across every area here, and even in this green area, they are capable of seeing a lot of vistas within this vicinity, including the clock tower and the crescent in Mosque. So, so this is how it looks like when you view it from Mosque and clock tower. These are the considerations regarding their vistas. So in this, inside the circle, we started with the process of the public building. First, we are adding two towers in both sides, which is between Pasig, which is side of the Pasig River, respectively. They will act as a vistas, which are considered circular observatories. This overall plan is displayed in elevation view. And once the in water begins to fall down, it's gonna affect the cilantro plants, purifying the rainwater all the way into the collection. Even with even some purified water leftovers falling down to the basic river. So these are initial diagram. So for the process of the massing, the two towers are set 100 meters apart with each tower bearing a diameter of 10 meters and a height of 15 meters. We started with the box form all the way into converting it into cylinder and splitting it into five floors based on the height of the buildings. Once we have decided that the initial form is already thought, we, we, we created our first form, which is So here, once again, this is the, the dimensions of the public building with a scale included. First, it shows a elevation view and an axonometric 3D view of the building. Eventually, we were able to get in a form that, that at applies our and integrates our research with the curved windows and diagonal system. Also, these win windows in the in this area will represent the party, which will where the cilantro plants will be integrated for and the water collection system. So another 3D view for the form and also here it's a close up for the tower which will be considered as a vista 
which was which was the our main purpose for the Circulenos City. So this is the initial 3D form. It's still new found and it's will it will still evolve eventually as it passed. Here is our initial concept for the party. We decided that we will once the plants have, have been harvested, they will be placed in, inside the connected wire, which is attached in the middle of the two, two glass panels. The glass panels will have holes so that the, the, the plant can be attached without losing focus on the, losing focus while, while getting touched by the rainwater tube. Once the rain water falls to these plants, they, they will be converted into purified water, eventually landing safely into this water container. So these are our idea. And this rainwater collector tube, it comes from the roof of the fabric building. The purified water container can now be used by anyone in the Circulenos. So these are initial ideas so far. So for the public buildings, once again, just a recap, we are also considering putting the research into this special block so that there will be plantation area and it will not be entirely be main office block. In this plantation area, they will be seen towards the circle, circular park, circular park, so that they will be connected to each other. So that's it so far. Am I going to hear TJ's voice? TJ, yeah. will you add something? Um. I'll explain you the model that we made. Okay, so you go ahead. Yeah, so um, so we started with the uh, cylinder. And with the cylinder, we integrated um, our diagrid system. So you can see here, um, that's the parang skeletal around the structure, around the model. And then... For the first four floors, it will be um, uh, covered with the curved glass, while the top floor will be an open area where it's just the wall is just um, the the top part of the diagrid system. And then we decided to put the the access area, like uh, either elevator stairs, in the center, so that the view or the the, the 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 view outside the so that you have a a view all around the building all around the model the structure and then with that we just we answer okay uh, sige. um for the other process that uh, Idris presented I'm actually okay with it uh this became it's good that you are presenting the fabric building because this is my issue kasi, the diagrid is actually okay, uh, but the span of, uh, can we go to the fabric building massing again? Like the span of it, like that one, no? uh, how it's going to be supported, it's a really long span, 100 meters. We will add ano, pillars, columns here. It's not that final. Ah, okay. Oh, that's good. We will so, add, of course. Anong, anong distance ng pillars? Well, it obviously it, it depends on the sizes of the windows. We will try to make them proportional and equal to each other. Ano ang minimum? Ano yung maximum? Sorry. Wait. No, I'm just asking theoretically, like hypothetically, is it 
six meters, ten meters, etc. Sir, hypothetically, yung mga eight to ten. Masyadong malaki yun. Six. Six. Mga six lang. Six to seven, six to seven, or eight. So work around that. And also, my issue with this fabric building, how is this going to translate for the other parts of the master plan? Because when you're looking at this, it looks like uh, a long building. How are we going to fit in the entire master plan? Okay. So wait. Yeah. Because it's a, the, so, the fabric so building is a DNA. Yes. So it's not a fabric building. It's a special building, Idrius. Oh. So if you're going to have a six, six meter, a uh, six meter, paano mangyayari sa river? You'll be blocking the boats. Mm, uh, actually, the, the boats, I mean, uh, that big, usually they are, they are only two to three meter wide. So they will still fit in. No, that six meters is really tight for that because yes, they will fit, but uh, uh, there are bigger boats as well. And at the same time, you cannot have that kind of... Did you see the design of bridges? They try to limit the, the columns, no? Whereas you, you know, uh, you disregard that uh, consideration. So, so, uh, so unless, unless the pillar column is larger than usual. Yeah, but uh, why would you build a, a building like that there? For what purpose? So they would said so they would have an additional crossing towards the other island, sir. Then your master plan was flawed. It's not good enough. So by yes, adding sir. that, you're saying that your master plan was a failure. And and at the same so we'll, time, we'll change and, it. and at the same time, you are destroying the circle. You are destroying the. The beauty of your master plan before was that you have a very nice circular bridge and then all of a sudden you disregarded that. You know what I mean? So, sir, I'm thinking if, if this one we're, we will what I did and place it here instead. Yeah. Uh, wait lang ha. So that it, there, there will be no more intersection in the water. How, what here in the side of the land. I was thinking if I can move this into this area. And like then, this building. And then you block the view of the river. Ah, yes, sir. Oh, yun. So you're destroying your master plan. You know, you need to obey the master plan. That's the purpose of the master plan, Idris. You need to follow it. You need to yes, respect sir. it, okay? So otherwise, you disregarded the, the, the value of the master plan. So you need to work uh, within it. So the, the other process that you introduce, you can apply it in a fabric building. When you say fabric building, you're designing for the blocks. You're designing for the general building. Like what do you put here? Like whatever I put here, it can be applied here as well. Do you get it? Yes, sir. And then if you have a special building, let's say the mosque or a museum, then you design it with a unique idea. You need to design two, remember? Minimum of two. Minimum of two, yes, sir. Like one is the fabric building and one is the special building. <clears throat> okay? Sige. Yes, sir. Ah, sige. See you next. We will relocate. Ah, but the research will say no. it's not about the relocation diba ang tanong ko rin sa iyo how will you fit fit that linear thing in that block ang haba niyan Idris so listen yes listen. 100 meters like like how will you fit it here how do you maximize this do you imagine all the blocks to have all of those linear thing you need to imagine it as an ordinary building that adjusts to the shape of the lot. 
Do you get it? Yes, sir. Okay, ito sinabi mo kasing linya na yan. You're saying all of this will be lines. Do you get it? It's a very strong suggestion. Do you get it? So for a fabric building, try to create either a rectangular volume and then you shape that ball volume. Uh, you transform that volume based on your ideas and then that volume can be adjusted on the moment you put it here. Do you get it? And then uh, you replicate it and then it will have different transmutations meaning different adjustments later on. Pero syempre, you're only going to develop just one. And then transportation will be just an assumption that this is how it's going to look like if it's going to have a different owner with a different modification, but this is the DNA of this fabric building. Do you follow? Yes. Okay, very good. Sige. Okay, any questions, guys? Sir, this it's okay if the color scheme of the layout, layout is orange, orange team yung presentation slides. Okay lang po. Oh, maganda naman. Okay, okay naman yan. Pero concentrate ka. Wala na akong questions. I don't have any questions regarding your presentation style. You've improved so much already. You need to work on the design and planning. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Sige. Hi, Sir Jim. Hello. Um, Kayo na ba last? Yeah. Um, I, I actually have a... Yeah. Um, heads up lang, sir. Um, a while ago, I was exporting my work. And then most of it nawala po, sir. Um, so it's my... I, I guess part of it's my fault. And also the software. So then the crashed. Hindi na save. But I'll present what I have, what is saved, kahit medyo kulang, just to give, you know, um, so just to be fair to everyone else. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. That's my fault. Sorry. <laughs> I wait. Hi, wait, sir. Naglalag. Ay, nawala. Sir, can you see the screen? No? Um, yes nga, ayan o. Oh. Okay, okay, sorry. Nagdalag kasi yung wifi ko din. So, this is the location of our fabric. Um, not fabric pala. Um, our special building. It's along the Bamboo Park and Intramuros. Uh, the area that the... Since the concept we were talking about with the city is a, is a tropical city, uh, we thought of the, the parts with we did not get to address that was also suggested by Sir Jerry to either move the bamboo park along the river or we thought of a way how we could integrate um how, how can we integrate a system and a program that will bring people here to uh, introduce water. So Oh no, it's lagging. Here, Jim. Uh, <laughs> hold up. Okay. So within the site location there um shoot.
So within the site, sir, um, we did a quick statistics within um, the the area. Actually, no, wala po yung mga sheets. So um, I'll just mention it. But there is this. There has been this study wherein that majority of elderly. It, it's been shown and proven that um, there there's issues with mobility and there's also it. It compromises about um, Tracy, it's okay. Just maybe find the find the lang the yeah. ano. Find the lang. Yeah, the, ano. Hello, can you hear me? It's okay. Find the lang the the images, and then uh, I'll try to find time to uh to talk to you guys because it's very hard to talk without, uh, without visuals. Yeah, image. Yeah, no okay. wala sir. Okay, so try to find it first. Okay. Mm hmm. Um. What I could present though is like some of the data we worked with the uh, anthropometrics. Okay. So um, studying ahead. with regards, because the the concept as we discussed last time is how can we bring um this space with with more value. So we thought of a concept wherein the use of um what you usually see of water reservoirs, um, let, let's say it kind of usually looks like, like an umbrella shape that collects water. It's been seen through with different types of architectures. And um, the, the, we thought of how, what, what happens when you embed that within a, um, a research facility for those who have, who has problems with mobility. So a lot of the space has has to be has to do with the anthropometrics of the users. So in within the population, yung mga matatanda by 2030, 20, there's a projection by 2025 to 2030 that we will from a young population, we will start transitioning to an elder population. So there's a higher increase. Although majority parin is um like middle age and young there there's going to be a, a more a larger population with regards to the elderly and around and most of the um motor fu functions of someone who's past 60 years old starts to um starts to get worse and a lot of the the parks or facilities that are within Manila, it's either usually yung mga the rich can afford it or it's not and it's not accessible to the to to the general public. Usually big open wide spaces. So how can we incorporate that and how can we introduce um elderly into the picture? So and then there's also this minority about children because there's been also studies uh, as mentioned um like by other members from what I remember in Lance, is that, you know, children kind of bring this energy where, wherein um, it somewhat activates the mood. Because what, uh, according to psychologists, what the elderly needs in order to get them moving is something that gets, makes them feel more active. So when you're bathing, uh, even though uh, if they're bathing within a bamboo forest, if they become way too calm, it will be harder for them to uh, get on the move and improve their uh, mobility, their movement, especially if they're going through the treatment. So kind of encouraging um, the intermingling of different, um, of young, of the two extremes, the children and the elderly will kind of, um, Will will mutually benefit each other because the children now, um, they they see the people who are kind of like them. They are also somewhat trying to improve their their movement, their development. Because there's been uh, about there there's been a discrepancy with regards to the statistics, um, that PWDs like these children with mobility issues is. 1.43 percent but in the 
general global um, statistics, so it should range 10 to 12 percent. So there's a huge discrepancy and, and disregard with that population. So, um, are, you trying, to, are you trying to show something? Kasi yeah, I, yeah, but, sir. But, pero it's not the slides. It's are, not showing. Yeah. It's not moving. No, it's not. I can still see segregation, green strip, golf course. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so sorry. I think there's something wrong with the. Uh, it's not my day, sir. Okay, it sounds it sounds like it. Yeah, but, I feel so dead. <laughs> um, do you st well up an answer? Yeah, na. Um, is it moving or in the? Yes, it is moving. Okay, so sorry. So I was talking without any images. I'm so sorry, but yes, this is the elderly, and then, um, these are the children. So, with regards to the space, it's gonna a lot of data will be dictated by these so these are local data and some of it a little bit international because i couldn't find uh some numbers so i had to estimate some of them and then um there was supposed to be a figure with a person right here but the idea is um because when in therapy uh usually these places are done in isolation or in a certain room like a small treatment room but then um there what could have been maximized is like the the hallways or the movement where people transition so that instead of being within um the space inside you would be able to interact with the with the different patients so that kind of like motivating yourself with the other people um with with the other people who's receiving treatment and then yeah um Nawala yung iba, but yeah, um, there was other sheets that pre represented na there was this contraption where in um in therapy, where in the the user is being held up by um kind of it kind of looks like a a crane that's holding you up to help you walk, and then um instead of just in one area it could circulate within a certain corridor um yeah that's it for the 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 um the anthropometrics that's shown here the other data uh, nawala <laughs> sorry but um with regards we also looked into the bamboo so we we looked at how it can be used as well as a material because um, with regards to the um, with regards with regards to the recovery center, um, it's it's also stated that using wooden uh, wood as a material, besides its haptic um, touch, because according to plasma. Um, you have to always include the other senses when it comes to architecture. So it kind of makes, creates this multi-dimensional healing and um, taking advantage of the, the materials that is used within the site calls for uh, using it. Instead of wood, it could be bamboo, CLT planks that could be laid out on, on the ground. So yes, sir. Um, I couldn't show much more because uh, no hola. But um, I could get back to you, sir. Pero the 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 form was actually derived by the our previous iteration, uh, last week, and um, I couldn't show say much because uh, if I describe, wala. <laughs> okay. Yun lang, sir. Sige. Uh, sige. Looking forward to that. So far, maganda naman yung uh, ideas. So uh, but yeah. So I guess that's it, muna for now, right? Yeah, so sorry, sir. <laughs> no big lad din ako. I don't know what to do. But yeah. All right, sige. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, did I miss a group? No naman, no? So, uh, so everyone did a good job in general. So uh, just keep in mind the criticism that I provided. So I'll see you guys uh, next week. Okay? So message me if you have any questions. Sige, sir. Right, thank, thank you, you sir. Guys. I'll bye. reach you out. Hmm? Okay, bye. Yes, sir, I'll just uh, reach you out with um, if I could, uh, pahabol or anything. 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, what? Oh, sige. Yeah. Sige, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, thank you. All right, bye. Bye.